This podcast is brought to you by HelloTushy.com. Father's Day is coming. I don't know when the last time you took a good look at your dad with his shorts on and you could think to yourself, you know what? My dad's been wearing those shorts for the last four days. I can't even imagine what his asshole stinks like. <laughs> you don't need to have those thoughts anymore. Not with Hello Tushy because they're a portable bidet that fits right on your toilet. And from now and forever, you're going to fall in love with it. Get all, go to hellotushy.com right now and press in. Church. And get 10% off delivered right to your house. Also, there's a reason I've been telling you about MeUndies for months. Now, that they are simply the softest, most comfortable underwear you'll ever wear. Once you try them, you won't want to wear anything else, all right? Do me a favor. Get 20% off your first pair, plus free shipping at MeUndies.com slash Joey. Right now. That's MeUndies.com slash Joey. 20% off your first pair. MeUndies.com slash Joey. Kick that fucking meal, Lee. Here's what I'm talking about. Your little midweek finger up the ass from Uncle Joey coming at you. Nothing like a finger up the ass midweek to let you know you're slipping, cocksuckers. Kick that mule, Lee. Why am I fucking going deaf here? I just ate a bag of mold. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Kick that mule, Lee. Bust the speakers. I want to see smoke coming out of the speakers. Church of what's happening now. Coming at you. June 14th, you bad motherfuckers. Here you go. Little young Angus for you. Here we go. Oh shit. Oh shit. There you go, cocksuckers. It's a little soul stripper for you. Uncle Joey here. It's a beautiful Wednesday night. My main man, Billy Horrendous, in the house tonight. And my main nephew, Mr. Lee Syatt, the ultimate goomba of death. How are you, my friend? I'm doing okay. I'm, wor- I'm worried about that, that mold you just ate. What do you think you're going to do? What are you going to do? We eat molds every fucking day. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> are you wor- Is that the first time you've eaten a moldy edible? I guarantee I've eaten a lot of mold in my day. When, do you ever eat bread in midway through the sandwich? On white bread, you're like eating fucking mold on tuna. And you start getting worried and you're drinking milk. Nothing you can do. You eat mold every day. I, I hope the THC burns the mold or something. The, anti, the antibiotics in my stomach. If not, I'll drink some kombucha juice and I'll be right back. <laughs> Billy Arenda, what's happening, my brother? Terrific to be here. I know. Absolutely. I know. I'm happy that you're To here. see you and Lee and your countenances up front. This is tremendous. It's tremendous. Yeah, absolutely. I joined you guys a while ago on the phone, but uh, to be here is extra special. Thanks for having me. Yeah. No, I always want to have you on. I know Billy since uh, 1978, which made him uh, 11. In 78, around there, 11. yeah. 11. If I was 14, I was headed to a yeah. uh, five-star basketball camp with his older brother. And uh, his dad drove us, and Billy sat there salivating from the fucking mouth. <laughs> Because we're about to go to fucking five star basketball yeah. camp, the premier basketball camp in the country. You had U B Brown out there breaking it down. We Rick had, Pitino. Who else was there that week? The guy from Army, that's oh, now uh, friends with Shinsulo. Sh- no, uh, uh, Shachewski was there Shishetsky before Duke. Was there. Yeah, way yeah. before Duke. Yeah. Uh, who else? The guy that's friends with Shinsulo, who coaches Texas. Who uh, coaches Texas? Well, Shock is smart now, but Rick Barnes. No. You about Rick Barnes? Curly head guy. Oh, Tom Penders. Tom Penders. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah, exactly. Was with exactly, somebody yeah. Boston College or something like that back yeah, then. Yeah, yeah, that's our, right. He our, was at Fordham as well, I think. Yeah, if I'm not Fordham. Yeah. Our counselors were like. Roosevelt Bowie. Dominic. What's his name? The guy from Atlanta. Well, Hawks. you know what it was? Dominic. I'll, I'll never forget this. When you guys got back, my brother Greg says to me, he goes, hey, you know, there's this guy. Remember this name. Dominique Wilkins. Dominique he was Wilkins. on his team. Yeah, he was a he camp was on counselor. his team. Yeah, he was our camp about counselor. that? Kenny Denard from Duke. Yeah. Yeah. Who else? Cheese Johnson. From yeah. In New Mexico State. Yeah. Cheese yeah. Johnson. Oh my gosh. You know what Cheese Johnson's claim to fame was? The first time they showed Bird on national television, yeah. he had to cover him because Bird, oh really? Yeah, because Bird was like Division Three or something. 
or Indiana State. Whatever yeah, the fuck yeah, it yeah, was. Yeah. <laughs> so in those days, they only showed Division One games. So here they're like eight and zero, nine and zero. How did that know? How did that work? The camp because didn't I mean did the NCAA change their rules because now athletes can't make any money? No, no, they didn't make any money then either. They were just I'm, doing it for to be yeah, nice. Yeah, they were, what's what's that? The five star basketball. Oh team. yeah, yeah, yeah. You go up there as a counselor and you get exposure because that guy Howie Garfinkel, who Garfinkel, recently passed, passed away, passed yeah, away yeah, recently. Yeah, 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 He knew everybody. He could yeah. make a call and solve all your problems. Oh, that's amazing. He could make a call and solve all your yeah. problems. So you had the best college basketball players in the country in the for country, free. For free. Wow. No, no, maybe they just yeah, well, they didn't well, get paid. Well, you were there, you know, as a as a high school kid, you were there for exposure and for exposure. I was for in the eighth college grade, coaches. right? I, I so yeah, a, on I the think way your up. brother was a freshman. Yeah, maybe that makes that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, your brother yeah. was a freshman at St. Peter's Prep. Yeah, yep. I was in the eighth grade. I went to, that year. I went to five star, booze with Rob. Yeah, Cusso booze. Yeah, guys. yeah, yeah. That was in Vineland, New Jersey. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I went to it. Oh, I went to Superstar. But That's I went right. to Superstar right. the year before. That was Hurley's camp. In yeah, Jersey I went to yeah, Superstar yeah, yeah. the year before with uh, the kid that went to Boston College from Saint from Hudson County. Oh, from Saint, Rick Weinert. Yes, Rick Weinert went wow. to. Wow. And the both, not, oh, Corin didn't show, but the other guys both showed. The Spinarco brothers. Yeah, yeah. Both showed, and uh, it was just a different classic time. stuff. You know, the the distinction that Billy and I have that Lee talks about and. Everybody who listens to a podcast has is that if you're a certain age, uh, we grew up in the same delicatessen, and that made us brothers. I mean, that made us because we were we. I'd it's see like family. Yeah, I mean, come on. Every goddamn day, this and I'd speak about them all the time. It's called Hashways, and Billy lived right around the corner from them, and there was a, a basketball court that belonged to the church, right next to Hashways. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It was Wizards. Pinball. The pinball yeah, 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 place yeah, where you used right. to buy acid. <laughs> then it was like uh, uh, Hashways. Yeah. Then it was the liquor store, which was right. always there. Charlie Frank, Chanberry. Frank Ashione. Yeah. Worked at the liquor store. Right. right? Even yeah. before. So we sure. grew up, you know, you went there at 3 o'clock and you stayed there till 7. And in the yeah. meantime, you drank six Cokes from Hashways. There was no yeah. bottled water in those days. There's no fucking yeah. bottled water. It was the iced tea in the container. The iced tea in the container. The container. Yeah. yeah. And you ate a ha- uh, I was telling him my favorite Hashways sandwich was roast beef with Swiss on rye bread with mayonnaise, light salt and pepper, fucking <laughs> a bag of Wise potato chips and a fucking 16-ounce bottle of Coca-Cola. Or I would get the turkey Swiss that was your that was your backup. That your was backup, backup sandwich, turkey yeah, Swiss, yeah. on a fucking baguette with uh, wise potato chips and a whole jar of pepperoncinis. Yeah. Or yeah. there was another one, ham and cheese. But then when I wanted the good shit, I went around the corner to Fifth Avenue Deli and I get oh, the, yeah, yeah. the wet moots with the ham with the fucking roasted tomatoes. <laughs> Are you for the roasted fucking uh, peppers? Peppers, yeah, yeah. Are you tremendous. fucking kidding me? So people? there wasn't like a deli rivalry. You could you could like cross enemy lines and go. Yeah, to the yeah. You could. He, I think he even went there. We had a friend oh, yeah. that owned the funeral parlor. <laughs> And they had sauce there. Like oh, yeah, it was more sauce. like that was before yeah. Hashways got into hot food. Right, you go Fifth Avenue Deli. Right, you went to Fifth and Avenue even, Deli. Uh, even uh, Roses. Roses. Remember Roses? You'd buy a sandwich, Lee. Right? It would be. I'll never forget this. Uh, you bu- you would buy a roll and just the sauce. Not even the meatballs. It was like fifty cents without the meatballs. Probably like a buck fifty with the meatballs. And the other thing this is the classic Hashway story. Everyone had a bill, so you walk in and on the register there were all the receipts. All the bills were were still there, right? So one Saturday, and they were like you know like these receipts, the old school, and they'd write your name down. So one day, hot August day, I go around the corner and I bump into Tommy Parker, and he goes, J- "Bill, Joe, shut me off. Sky high. You won't serve me anymore. My bill's too big." He goes, "Go in, get me a sandwich, and bring it out, and put it on your bill, and I'll pay you back." I said, "Sure, no problem." Joe goes, "What do you want?" I said, "Roast beef, mustard, cheese, he knew lettuce, it was tomato." I remember that story. Yeah, he wouldn't give it to you. He says, "Get the hell get out the of here." That sandwich is for Parker. I came out. I've never seen anyone more disappointed because Tommy was deflated that I couldn't get the sandwich. Now we had tons of food in this area. But Hashways was Hashways. And Hashways was Hashways till about seven years. When we shot the documentary, right, we yeah. went to Hashways and there was no roast beef. And I said, fuck this motherfucker. <laughs> it was, ruined the whole trip. It ruined the whole trip for me. 
You think I'm kidding? I was like, no roast beef at one o'clock. What the fuck is going on here? I've never seen you complain at like a restaurant before. <laughs> he like, I think he didn't. You say something to someone there, or you leave? Gary, I told yeah, you. Yeah, I, I told him. I told yeah. him. And now yeah. Gary died. <laughs> so now I feel fucking terrible because I made a big deal about the roast beef. <laughs> I just was on a plane for five hours, cocksucker. <laughs> one o'clock, your mother would be on the third roast beef by now, <laughs> and you don't have one out of the oven yet. Yeah, I did that once. How about, remember Tedesco's in West New York, the restaurant? Yeah, Tedesco's. So, Tedesco's. so my brother Tony loves. loves Loves their muscles, right? He loved their muscles. So I went, came out to visit him. He lived in L.A. Uh, he lives out in the desert now, right? So he, he said, okay, don't forget the muscles. So I stayed at my buddy Frank Seattle's house in Jersey City the night before we left to, to come out to L.A., fly from Newark. And we're f- over Dayton, Ohio. And I said, oh, I forgot the muscles. My brother wanted to throw me out of the house. He didn't oh, want to yeah. let me in. I told you. Because he was Lee. all fired up bringing told, the muscles. Lee, we don't fuck around. You, I don't give a fuck if you better get back on that fucking plane and go back yeah. and get the fucking yeah. muscles. When I first lived in Boulder, if anyone asked me, if anybody came to visit me, they had to bring something. Like, don't come out until you... Yeah. Like, George came out, I made him bring 10 Cuban sandwiches. To this day, he tells me, you don't know how embarrassing that was, walking <laughs> on that plane with those 10 Cuban sandwiches right. stinking up the Cuban plate. I mean, it was terrible. What do you miss? Because we we talk a lot about food. Obviously, we, we like Chinese food. We like all that stuff. What do you think you miss the most? Me? Yeah. Hashways. Really? Even though it doesn't exist anymore. I still. It was more than the food. We grew up with them. When you grow up with somebody and you have tabs, and they know all your creepy shit, you know. Because after we got all older, they were still there. We 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 showed up as innocent kids, you know. I mean, Billy was always a great kid. Billy got in no <laughs> trouble. But, you know, we showed up there as young kids that played basketball, and we might have drank six beers and puked. And and then, you know, one day I remember Mr. Hashway out there saying, I don't know what happened, because we robbed the beer trucks, and they'd pull up to the jewel, you know, to the liquor store. You know, uh, it, the, the worst story ever was the morning I got up after disappearing for a week, and this drug dealer was chasing me. And I ran to Hashway's. And That's this, right. That's right. And Mr. Yes. Hashway went outside and told him to get the fuck he, out of there. He, he took care I had, of business. I had, Rome thorn, I had thorns all over me <sighs> because I jumped into Our Lady of Fatima, into the basement, yeah. and all those roses were there. I got thorns everywhere. And then instead of getting out of there, I kept running in the fucking patch. Oh. And I had a thousand thorns on me. So I came out there, and I dodged across the street and ran right to Hashway's. And all of a sudden, I hear him knocking on the glass. Come out here. I'm going to fucking shoot right through the glass. Mr. Ashway took his apron off. He ran out there. He goes, listen, you motherfucker. I don't know who the fuck you are. Get the fuck out of here yeah. before I call. He came in. He went off on me. <laughs> he went off. But see, that's the thing. is that You hit the nail on the head. It's more than it was like a happening. It was a social hub. I mean, it was, you know, the personalities, the characters, uh, and also the pace, you know, there was like a daily life. Like you'd walk over there, you'd meet in the morning, and Parker would roll in, Dorito would walk in, and you had your crew that you walked to school with. I'll never forget Tommy Parker. He worked on that poem from Mrs. Nass in seventh grade. So you went to Horace Mann. I went to Horace Mann. Okay, then you and went then to St. Peter's Then I went to St. Peter's right. Prep, like my brothers. My mom sent me down to prep down in downtown Jersey City. But walking with Parker, I'll never forget, he takes his – notebook out he says oh i wrote i finished that poem for mrs nass i don't remember all the verses but this verse i remember clumps of lead filled his head and soon we all knew honest abe would be dead <laughs> it was like a president's day poem that parker had to write it's tremendous so parker lived across the street from you yeah over so he the lived trophy at, store right the drugstore joseph's. joseph's yeah exactly yeah and then you would walk up that block, you would meet at Hashways, and We'd then meet walk at to Man. And then walk to school, yeah. There was like that whole daily, you know, pace of life. And then you'd walk, we'd walk for lunch either to Hashways, then this is in grammar school now, or I'll never forget, we would go to White Castle where his mom worked, but we could never get back for one o'clock. The walk right, was too, too long, long you know what long. I mean? So whenever we were feeling like really rebellious, we'd go to White Castle anyway and roll in at like 12, 15, 12, 20. But a lot of times, we you go to the window, you'd order a cheeseburger, an orange soda, and a shake. And if the manager wasn't around, you gave, they gave you bags, Lee. So on the way back, you were giving food away, even like you'd curry favor with whatever teacher was checking you in if you got there a little late. 
with the uh, hash rate. Fucking White Castle. That's I can't believe they let you walk to White Castle. <laughs> they didn't let school. you. They didn't let you. Well, oh, was it that you thing where you're supposed, supposed to like walk you, home or something? Like that was Yeah, you were either going to go home for lunch or you could eat lunch at the school and then play at the playground. At the high school, when I was a freshman, they let you out for lunch. Then they made a new rule. No more leaving the premises for lunch. So you had to leave out the side door and then come back through the side door. So we had right. doors that there wouldn't be monitors at. We knew where there wouldn't be monitors at. And I always went to lunch with brass, which meant that this was somebody's son, somebody who mattered. <laughs> if, they, if they got nailed, I got nailed. You, you know had comfort, yeah, yeah. So I would go out to lunch with Ascalese. What's going to happen to me? Right. You know, right. I was telling these guys, you know, <laughs> we come from a very unique place. You know, like it's, it's, it's why we're still ticking. It's why we came out here, the whole thing. And I still remember that my sophomore year, my my sophomore year, the Massey Cadillac. Yeah. Was yeah. that who was in, yeah. in North Bergen? Yeah, the Massey, I believe so, yeah. D-E-M-A-S-I. S-I. S-I. Yes, yeah, yeah. The Massey Cadillac donated two Cadillac somethings. Two door, like the, the car that uh, Alonzo had in training day. Oh, okay, gotcha. That, that two car, the two door, it was something like that. <clears throat> what they did was they put alternate pedals in the other side and they gave it to North Bergen High School. As a uh, driver's, driver's ed, driver's ed, car? ed yeah, yeah, yeah. car, they gave like a muscle, like 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 no, no, it like wasn't a, a muscle well, car. It was a Cadillac. It was a Cadillac Still, before a Cadillac. the rims and shit. They gave you two Cadillacs, and then you had to give it back at the end of the year. And then the next year, they give you another car. That's not the point. The point was that there was a teacher named Mister McGrath. You know his son, yeah, Mark, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Mark. He went to jail. Correct. Remember no, was it, there was Sean McGrath too, right? Sean. Yeah, Sean. yeah, yeah, Mark, yeah. Mark, Mark is the singer. So put the microphone next to when it pops. No, it's not gonna pop. It's one of those underground ones. I hate those. Doctor Chinese can't pop this one. What's that Chinese woman who pops pimples on fucking? Oh, pimple popper. Pimple popper. So, uh, Mr. McGrath was the driver at, and it started very innocently. It started with three people had to put their name on a list at ten o'clock. Like if you had Jim. Right. Instead of the gym, you would drive with Mr. McGrath once a week, and it would all count towards your license. Okay. So you would, three of us would get in the car with McGrath, and, and it started with you going to White Castle and then turning the car around, and you would get in it. Okay, you'd, you'd rotate? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And then it would, the, th- the third driver would end at the Richfield Circle, <laughs> and then right. you'd turn around on Tunley <laughs> Avenue, and you'd drive yeah. back to the high school. That's how it started. That was the first month. <laughs> then we used to go, Mr. McGrath, you're hungry. <laughs> you know I can't stop the car. What do you mean you can't stop the car? You can do whatever you want. You got no cops behind you. So we started tormenting him, and then we would make him take us. We th- one day he passed the circle and he went into Chan's parking lot. So we're like, Mr. McGrath, th- 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 stop the car. Why? Hold on. And somebody got out of the car. He's like, Where's he going? Hold on. One second. He's gonna make a phone call. He came out with ribs and fucking steak on a stick. So after like 10 he minutes... He comes out in a poo-poo flat. Yeah, yeah, he comes out yelling. Mr. Rick's like, that's not allowed in the car. <laughs> Finally, he ate one of the ribs. He's like, okay, what am I going to do? So now we had him. So now every day it was the same thing. We grab, let's go up to the Chinese restaurant. Now, now, now shifting gears just a little bit. But, you know, Coco's very modest with his game. Your game was very crafty. Oh, but... Your hoop game. Oh, my hoop game. game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you and Parker had similar games. You know, kind of like that John Bagley... Kyrie Irving of the, of this era, you know, UB Brown said that Kyrie Irving is the best finisher in the game, best finisher finisher at the rim, and you and Parker kind of shared that in common. I remember your game as being good ball handler, good feel for the game. You were a disher, you were a swisher, defender, you were hungry. I just want to make sure we talked a little bit about your game. Yeah, we'll I don't to, want to get we'll out of the parking lot. We'll get, we'll, no, no, we'll get to that yeah. story later. Yeah, but this went on. Oh. So it started with, then there's a Dairy Queen. How old was Mr. Yeah. McGrath, yeah. do you think? Mr. McGrath had to be 50 at the time, 48, 49, And a trio 45. of 16-year-olds. would talk him into going to Chance, oh. and then there's a Dairy Queen right there. <laughs> so he would say, Mr. McGrath, what the fuck? We're already here. Joey, we can't. Coco, you got to stop. Come on, let's go to DQ. And we go to DQ and get a fucking Mr. Misty float. <laughs> and then that went on for like three months. What, did like a 15-minute? Like, uh, Two minutes to run in, and then we eat it, and then we pull over before the school, dump all the evidence, and go back to the school. Then that started. Then, then it got to the point where we go, Miss McGrath, oh. forget Chance, forget Dairy Queen. 
Let's go get an eight pack. <laughs> <laughs> we get an eight pack of nips, you know. Yeah, this, yeah, the small and ones. Yeah. Four of us would yeah. drink too, <laughs> except Mister McGrath, so we would split the third one. I mean, that's the shit we grew up with. You know, you said something interesting to me, and it's funny. Last night, as I was getting dressed to go do comedy. I thought you would mention this about basketball, and I might as well tell you the story since you mentioned it, you know? I was all in, bro. I was all in. I got hooked on pussy in the seventh grade, and the girl was supposed to give me a piece of ass at the end of the seventh grade. She didn't give it to me, and I fell apart. I ended up going to summer school. I was in love with her. She made me come over and dry hump her. I just couldn't focus. Finally, we broke up, and I got left back in the seventh grade. And it was fucking heart wrenching for me because I was always an intelligent guy. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm not the I'm no Phi Beta Kappa, but I shouldn't have gotten left back. I always got B's and A's and shit sure, like that. Yeah. And I was always the type of guy that just took notes and listened. And so, by the failure that I felt that left back that year, for me to get everything back, I just dedicated myself to basketball. We were zero and seven, my seventh grade year when I got left back. I joined the team finally. And yeah. We're all in fucking seven in the North Bergen. Really? Me, yeah. Chucky, David Ruiz. I mean, these are guys that can. You ball. got talent, yeah. Who were you playing? Franklin. Tough schedule. Oh, oh you're on the road. We're, you no, must have been on the road. Oh, in seven. We were. We were Frank. Well, we only played. Oh, we played two the other games. grammar schools. Yeah, yeah you yeah, played yeah. two. You played two teams. You played oh, against three right. teams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You played yeah. the meets twice. You played them once at home, once at there. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you had Franklin, Lincoln School, which yep. were all fucking. They went to the games chained up. You know, they were coming to the games with balls on their ankles and shit. And you had Kennedy School. And Kennedy School was right. where North Bergen talent started. Ruger right. was down there. Yeah, yeah. He coached Pickenich and Calandrillo down there. That's where right. they were teammates. And they had somebody else down there. They had three people from the state team. Louis Cruz, maybe. Greco. Steve Greco. Greco. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, all yeah, those yeah, motherfuckers yeah. grew up yeah. together down there. Yeah. That's what nobody knew. Kennedy School, that Rugar yeah. guy, mm-hmm. who turned out to be gay, you know. Really? Yeah, Him and Coco that. Espinosa live like in many. That's what really? I heard. Really? Is that right? That's yeah. what I heard. They yeah. run a boys club somewhere in uh, really? the heart of the country. What's a boys kid? club? Like a boys club where people go and play basketball and you shoot arrows and you fucking, <laughs> whatever. It's a boys club. <laughs> and then, you know, also, you, uh, Robert Fulton, too. Was another school well, in the well, league. But, well, but I know well, you're saying. Well, you had the downtown. Was down there. You had the oh, downtown. All right. Oh, and the uptown. Uptown was. Fulton, Horace Mann, A and B. Right. You had yeah, the seventh grade teams, team, yeah, yeah, and you yeah, had yeah. Anna Hal Klein. Oh, that's right. They were in there. So you yeah, had the yeah. two Horace Mann teams, Robert Fulton with Glenn yeah. Conti, Archie Manning, and then you had Anna Hal Klein with Del Valle and Chuck Toro. Yeah. You, yeah. Had, you had good little fuckers. Yeah. So my seventh grade, yeah, I was 0-7. That made, not only did I get left back, but I'm on a team that sucks ass. So, dog, I didn't stop. You know, I know for a fact that if you get to something and you stick with it, something happens because I did it in the seventh grade. I went from being a fucking zero. I still remember going to Union City, Washington school, because in Uh those days you could use addresses. So let's say I was friends with Lee and Lee lived in West New York. Give me your address, bro. Why? Because I'm playing for the rec. That's what you did. You went to you went to competition. You know, you went everywhere. So I joined Union City Basketball League. And I'll never forget the first time I joined Union City's seventh grade basketball league. It was at Robert Waters. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And I get kept I kept getting called for three seconds. I didn't even know what three seconds was. <laughs> three seconds. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? I left there and I go, what's a three second violation? They're like, you can't stand in the paint. Can't be paint in the air. Yeah, yeah. I did not know this. Like, that's why I learned all this shit. Right. So you would just go to different cities. And then on Sundays, yeah. you'd take your bicycle and go down to Gilmore School. And that's where Dracula played. There was a kid, <laughs> Cuban kid. His name was Dracula. That was Slam Duncan and shit. He was just too <laughs> stupid. And Mahoney and all those guys yeah. would play yeah. there on Sundays, on Saturdays. And that's where you just got demolished. You got your basketball. You put it in your 10-speed in the middle. And you rode your bike on Kelly Boulevard 80 fucking miles on Saturdays, Jesus. going from court to court. Yeah. So I learned how to get good. My seventh grade year, I was horrible. By the time I made to eighth grade, I was starting. I was also playing for St. Michael CYO. Mm-hmm. I also played the 13 to 15 year old league at Horace Mann on Friday nights. Do you know what? I mean, in fact, Lee, I got to yeah. bring it for you. Before, when my mom died, my godmother told me to put away a box with everything that was important to me. 
and I put a trophy in there from the 13 to 15 year old no all way. stars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I also put a, a the, I, my name never came out in the paper. Never. And one Friday in 78, it snowed all week in North Bergen. The school system was completely closed. I remember this. It, was, it happened yeah. in Boston, too, yeah. So they opened up Friday night. The only thing that they kept alive was that basketball league at Horace Mann on Friday night at 6 o'clock. Because by that time, the, you know, it, the snow was pretty much gone. And I'll never forget going up there. There was nobody in the stands. Nobody dared to get on the right. bus. And we'd have 20 people in the stands on Friday. There was two games. They started at three. The clock kept running. Yeah, yeah. There was no timeouts, that type of shit. No, there were timeouts, <laughs> but the clock ran. Running clock. Running yeah, clock. Running clock, yeah. And we would go there on Friday nights. And I'll never forget, one Friday night, I went bananas. And the next day, yeah. I'm reading the paper, and I say, North Bergen, 13-year, 15-year-old, because everything else was shut down. There was no basketball game, nothing. Right, right. The only sports <laughs> was the 13, the 15-year-old league, and it was the night I had 33 points. And it said in the article, Coco Diaz drills home 33 points. Nice. Fucking 16. Re- I yeah. did like a Moses Malone type night. <laughs> and I cut that article out and leave. You know, I still have it. I was going to say, I'm surprised it's not like your Facebook profile picture. Just like Why that. would I do something like that? What am I an asshole? That's my own <laughs> private. So I worked really hard. I worked really my seventh grade year. The year Elvis died, I went to uh, I went to while El- the week Elvis died, I was in superstar basketball camp. Really? Yeah. I'll never yeah, forget. Yeah. I fucking my father, my stepfather came home. It cost sixty bucks in wow. those days. Wow! And my stepfather came home, and I used to rob him from time to time. In those days, he'd have a stack of hundreds <laughs> in a rubber band, and I fucking timed them perfectly. And he was downstairs. He goes, get get my cigarettes or something. I ran up and I took three hundred dollar bills. And then the next morning I woke up. He didn't say nothing. He didn't even know he was missing. And I go, fuck it. And I took a number one bus to Journal Square. I went to that Sporting Goods in Journal Square. Yeah. And I bought some badass limousines for the feet. And I walked with those motherfuckers <laughs> to Superstar Basketball Camp. I walked in, put my sixty on the table, and said, sign me up. And I won outstanding rebound. That's it, right. Because, I remember that. Because Richie yes. Weiner co- coached me. He taught me how to box out. Jackie yeah. Galoon came yeah. by. Yeah. Uh, who else? I was, was thinking there? of him when you were talking about Jackie all Galoon. those different courts. Yeah, yeah Jackie yeah. Galoon came by, and he taught us. And then that was it. I really you were hooked. Had, I was you were hooked. hooked. Yeah. I was, yeah. You had that I, success. I would That's play it. in the daytime. I would play at night. I read all the books. I wanted to move to French Lick. I wanted to fucking, uh, you know, in the mornings, sure. in the mornings I'd get up and I'd take 300 jump shots. That was the first thing I did. 300 jump shots, any court, yep. eight in the morning, bam, 300 in the summer. Pow. After the 300, I went home, lifted weights, jumped rope, did yep. wall yep. squats. I used to write letters to all the major colleges to get their training programs. Bill Foster right. sent me yeah. his. The guy from Rutgers, James, uh, what was the, the, the guy when we were kids, James... He used to jump. Bailey. James yes, Bailey from James Rutgers. Bailey, yes. Six foot nine. I'll yeah. never forget. And then uh, I, played, I played after Mr. Hurley saw me play basketball at Five Star. At Superstar. Superstar. Yeah. He put me and Whitey on his AAU team. That's right. Yeah. And yeah, we yeah. sat the bench behind Mandy Johnson and all these savages. Yeah. And I'll never forget. We went to play a game and they lost. And he was so hot. Mr. Hurley was furious. We're still in the eighth grade. We're still in North Bergen, all right? And Hurley says, uh, he's yelling at his fucking team. You guys fucking embarrass me, uh, whatever. I don't know, Bob Venable. Yeah, I remember that name. Bob yes, Venable, yeah. he was yelling at them. And all of a sudden he goes, I had two tickets for you guys to go see Michael Corrin in the garden tomorrow night against James Bailey and Rutgers. He goes, I'm giving them to the two visitors. And he gave the two tickets no to me and Whitey O'Donnell. And we went to the garden the next day. And we saw Michael Corrin on the Jersey City, number 31, dropping it on the lane. Yes. With Phil Ford, who was one of the guards and shit. Yeah. It was fucking mind-boggling. Like, all those days, you know, and I have to sh- let people know this because this is how much I was into it. Like, I blacked out everything. I just went yeah. home to eat. My mom was mad at me. I wouldn't go to the bar no more and help her. My whole life was basketball. And then uh, eighth grade year, we went four and three. At least we were yeah, that's over good. 500. Yeah, yeah. You only had seven games? 
That's all you play. It was seven games. And then I went to St. Michael's did good, but we kept losing to St. Augustine's. They were good. And they were way, always good. Just always. You know who the coach was? was Morell was the coach. Yeah. The father oh, and the son. Steve Rubinaccio. That was yes. the rest. Yeah, yeah. He coached yeah, yeah, me yeah, at yeah, St. Michael's. Yeah. yeah. But we also were losing to Our Lady of Garages in Hoboken. <laughs> Our Lady of Grace in yeah. Hoboken. Our old G, yeah. we would lose to them all the time. I don't know if they're still open. And I was just, I, I, it was everything I knew. It was all I knew. I and was, that's, see, that's the beauty of it. That's all you needed. It was, was a ball and you and, 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 and we had basketball nets. Every park had competition. Every, yeah. every oh, park yeah. had yeah. people there. You went to, I still yeah. remember going up there and that fucking Chucky Thomas would school me. Yeah. yeah. He was tough. Sure. Chucky Thomas. Yeah. And, yeah. And Havlicek, the little one. Yeah. And you guys had some, Chucky Thomas was tough. So all those guys, I would battle it with them on those things. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then my fight, it was funny. I was thinking about what happened. My f- so I went to Superstar. I also went to Willis Reed basketball camp. Really? Willis Reed had a basketball camp in the Poconos. And oh. I think my seventh grade year, I went up there. That was a very interesting yeah. camp. I also went to football camp with Chucky. I went to Joe Namath. You went to Joe Namath's camp? Yeah, I went to Joe Namath's wow. camp. Just to learn how to run and stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, sure. So I had done all this prep work. I mean, I told you, Cal and Drillo called the podcast once. And I even reminded them, I go, one of my yeah. memories that summer, that summer was dedicated just to making freshman basketball. My goal was to start freshman yeah. basketball. And if you looked at all the particulars, I kept coming back to being the small forward. No right. matter yeah. how you looked at this team, Chucky, mm-hmm. Whitey, right. no yeah. matter how you looked at this team, I still was the small forward. If Chucky told that there was a good kid out of Anna L. Klein. Right. There was a couple good kids, but I was still an offensive machine. I could really like Draymond Green. Yeah. Position. I was, I was in there, yeah. position. I was in there banging it. You know, I went to fucking five star. I played every day. I went to all, every county. I rode my bike. I ran with a weighted vest. I mean, I did it all. You know, at night we'd run. Me and Kathy Moran would go to McKinley, and they had nice. that hundred yard fucking thing. And me and Kathy Moran would time ourselves doing the forties and thirties <laughs> and twenties, and then we would do back and forths in Cincinnati. We would do right, Cincinnati. yeah, yeah. I mean, it was just we'd crazy. do suicide drills. We yeah. do suicide yeah. drills. I mean, I worked fucking hard, man. I would go up to you. Remember the Thirty Ninth Street projects? Yeah, yeah. They used to have a tremendous basketball <laughs> court in there at night. It was hidden and it had lights. And I would go there and see Sergio Badaji mm-hmm. from Union City and the other white kid they had that was tough. Union City had a white kid in 82. <laughs> Six <laughs> Wasn't Bobby Gator. Remember Bobby? No, no, well, he was Bobby my Gator year was, yeah, was Bobby Gator player. Was our age. This kid was uh, about a year or two. You ever do the defensive drill against the wall? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, by myself. Yeah. Not here. Not here? No, no. I'm too old. Well, you sit there who like, am I going to defend at 54? Like, like one of the, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Like this is it. Go up there. She's like that. Yeah. No, you no, stay no. there until your legs you shake? You stay there until you're shaking, Lee Syed. Till you're shaking at night. That that would be the end workout. That was it? Yeah. When I got home at night after I took a shower and played. Like, I played ball at night. Yeah, like, we always played it. Paul, Kelto, great, yeah. Paul yeah. Keltos would put speakers in his window. Yeah. We would play 38th Street Park till Mrs. Cardinelli would throw us yeah. out. Yeah. And then we I go home, take a shower, go to the garage, take the weights out. And at the end of the day I lifted, did all those biometric. Yeah. yeah. I jumped rope in the backyard. I did all that shit. I get the freshman year and everybody's telling me, now you gotta play freshman football. You gotta play freshman football because Reardon will only look Danny Reardon. Reardon. Danny yeah, Reardon. yeah, 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 yeah. I went one day, I'm like, I, I, why would I want to play freshman football? Why would I want to do something like this? I played fucking hoops for a year. I've been dreaming about freshman basketball. Now you're telling me I got to play freshman fo- fucking football. It's different seasons, though. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. It's still, you go right from football to basketball. Because football's got to be over by November 8th or something. And basketball is November 15th. You don't touch the, you can't have a coach in the room till the Yeah, they used to have strict rules on yeah, that. Strict they still rules. do, but yeah. November yeah, 1st yeah. is basketball. But you can't have a coach in the room till November 15th. That's when the legit tryouts are and shit like that. So really, on the first, you start going there at 3.30 and running and playing five on five. Just but by that, yourself as by, kids? Yeah, as kids. But then on the 15th, the coach wow. comes in. And on the 15th, I tried out. Everything was fine. We scrimmaged. And the first scrimmage, dog, I didn't start. I, it, it wasn't even that I didn't start. It was that I wasn't even playing. 
I mean, never mind nuts. Okay, so I'm yeah. not starting. I'll be a great six man. I'll learn to live with it. Somebody will break their fucking head and I'll start. <laughs> no, no, I would go to games and not even play. I mean, it was like fucking, what the fuck happened? And in practice, they couldn't stop me. Really? Oh, yeah. the first team in practice, that whole, no, yeah. no. They couldn't stop me. It was like, I don't understand this. Yeah. I don't understand. Did the coach just not like you or something? Just did not. It just did not. So that was Danny Reardon you were playing for, right? He was the freshman coach there. Yeah, forever. And it's weird. I wrote a blog of this years ago. Like, that that took the wind out of me. Those things stay with you. Yeah, for sure. That, for sure. Uh, that freshman year, that was my big, big, big disappointment. Like, yeah. sitting there and watching these cheerleaders, and my friends are coming to the fucking games going, and I'm like, I don't know. And I mean, we'd be up by 50, and half the bench would be in, and I'd still be sitting on the bench like the 12th man. It was an experience I wasn't used to. Coach Hurley called. He's like, I hear you're not starting. No, bro. It it was horrible. It was painful. It was just, and I would go to practice and fuck them up. Fuck them up. I mean, fuck them up. Rebound over them and fucking, you know. And it just killed me. It just killed yeah. me. Like I walked off that that court in February, and I was like, I don't know about next year. I don't know this. I don't yeah. know. You know, people were pulling up, asking me what's going on. I had people ask Reed, and and it just I quit. That was it. That cut right through me. That was the that was strike number one then my mom died maybe six months after that there was no coming back and I continued to play I'd play in yeah. Ashways yeah. and stuff like that but just not just lost it I just lost it and then about 1998 I was getting high with some people in North Bergen doing shit I shouldn't be doing and at five in the morning somebody you started the, playing? no at oh. five in the morning somebody that was there said hey man you know, we bumped into the party about a year ago. We were talking about you, Danny Reed. Do you remember him? Like, oh yeah. He goes, he was talking about how much he fucking hated you really? as a kid. Wow. I, you know, he he was kind of racist. There was a part of him that some Spanish people he liked, really? some he didn't. He just did not like me. He doesn't till today. And when this kid told me, these people were mm, telling me yeah. the story at the barbecue. He was saying, I can't believe he ever did something with his life. I didn't see him doing anything. You know, everybody was bothering me for years. He was saying people bothered me that we lost that season because I didn't start you. He goes, there was no way that kid was ever going to start on one of my teams. There was no fucking way. He just always didn't like me. And it's funny because when he told me that for about two years, I was like, you know what? I'm going to go back to North Bergen and light this motherfucker (laughs) up one night, find out. Because he was still doing shit at that time. He was still doing, he was involved somewhere. Now he's done. He's retired. What would I do? Kick him in the cocaine? (laughs) <laughs> I'm going to fucking knock his cane down. So that, it just, uh, it destroyed me. I, I didn't even know how to handle it at that age. Like, I yeah. really did not know. I didn't cry or nothing. I was just in shock. It was like a, like even the older players were coming to me going, what the, the, the people on varsity, the people yeah. the people who were playing JV, yeah. like, what the fuck? Then the next year, there was no sophomore team. And I had lost my confidence. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. I'm not going to make JV. If I go to JV, that means I got to play against Chucky Thomas. I'm not right. going to play against Chucky Thomas. I had a hard time uh, forget it. Well, you know, you know what's interesting too is that what's well, that's the Phil Jackson line. There are so many quotes out there, but he says, you know, there's more to life than basketball, but there's more to basketball than basketball. So, in other words, you know, there are a lot of life lessons that you learn from the game both good bad you know what I mean ups downs like Lou Rawls crazy turnarounds lady love yeah but you know what I mean like there's so there's so much that uh, it kind of teaches you and you learn through these rough experiences I think that's one of the things about about the game that's that's great but also it can you know it can break your heart too at the same time you know what I mean it broke me yeah yeah that uh that when I played CYO ball, when I played in the eighth grade, I played with Frankie Winters. Wow. Frankie yeah. Winters, Mike Hennessy. Chucky was an OLF guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Guy. sure, yeah. 
but Whitey was with us, and some Mahoney played for Yeah, whatever. yeah, yeah. And it was funny because I started in the beginning of the season, and then towards the middle, he didn't like me. Like, uh, not that he didn't like yeah. me. We were playing teams, and he was like, I'd rather have you come off the bench. That was hard to digest. Yeah. But after a couple games, I accepted the six-man role. Right. I was like, this is right. Great. But then it was right around the holidays, my eighth grade year. It was like the week after Christmas, we played the CYO Christmas tournament, and we played OG. Right. And I didn't play the whole game. He played the five yeah. guys in the center. And I still will never forget Ruben Acho giving me a ride home. And there was snow out, and we were in the bottom of my hill because you couldn't go up yeah, the yeah. hills in those days because of all the snow. And I remember on the wall on that corner, I had written my name on the wall, Coco 76, yeah, yeah. 1976. And we pulled up, and I'll never forget Ruben Acho saying to me, listen, man, tonight was not personal. Right, he goes, right, yeah. It was just yeah. about the game. He go, and he was telling me, you know, Hennessy's confidence was up, but yeah. this guy's was down. I wanted to switch it around. There was nothing in the next, the last four games I started. Yeah, yeah. So it was it was like a, a, a player thing. Right, yeah. Well, you know, that's going to happen, right? There are going to be matchups. Right. There's, There's going to be, be scenarios. Matchups, somebody's right. hot. Somebody's got the hot hand. But a lot of times, if you have at least that open, honest communication, right. Right, you got to live cool with it. With you got to deal yeah. with it. I dealt with it. I'll never yeah. forget that night. Listen. That song was on the radio. It was the hot song. Don't go crying. Oh, Billy Joel. Billy Joel. Yeah, that was the yeah, hot yeah, song yeah, then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was in the car with him, and he looked at me as he dropped me off. He goes, you want to walk up the hill? I go, yeah, yeah, yeah you're going to get stuck. And Steve said, listen, about tonight, I know you must be hurt. And I go, I just didn't know what I did. He goes, you didn't do anything. Right. He goes, yeah. I had a yeah, matchup. Happens, yeah. The center, I forget who the center on that team was, against that forward because he had heels. He could really jump. And he goes, by the time I thought of you, man, we were going to lose, so I didn't want to insult you. And, but that was the only time in all those years right. that I had had a problem. Like, I, I, I digested it. I'm like, okay, yeah. doesn't really matter because I'm starting freshman year. Right. I mean, it was no matter how you looked at it, I was the small right. forward. Yeah. yeah. I wasn't even close to that. I was like the third fucking forward on the team. He even played Archie Manning more than me. A skinny Filipino kid from Robert Fulton that was uncoordinated as fuck. There's a Filipino guy named Archie Manning Archie out there? Archie Manning, okay. <laughs> and we had a kid named Juan Rodriguez at North Berkeley. Yeah, I remember Juan. Well, Juan was good. God yeah, rest yeah, his soul. Yeah, God, yeah. before the kid from Philadelphia. What's the kid, the small guy from Philadelphia a couple of years ago that had the crossover? The best, Iverson? Before Iverson. I got to tell you something. Yeah, yeah. I'm telling you this from yeah. 40 years of watching yeah. basketball. I have seen some shakes in my life. Yeah. But one of the best shakes I ever saw in my life was Juan Rodriguez. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Juan Rodriguez had a shake move that you could have your hand on his waist, <laughs> and the next thing you know, you were six feet away from him. And more shakes than Carvel. Yeah. Sergio Badaji <laughs> had one that he would come with the ball and pick up his <laughs> legs high, like like machine gun his yeah, legs. Yeah, yeah. So on the defense, you didn't really know what you were doing, and he would shake you. Juan's shake was a crossover that he would come down dribbling, and then you would D up on him, and he'd wait for you to put your hands down. And he'd cross over on you real quick, but he'd do this, uh, he'd do like a rattle. Like he like <laughs> uh, 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 Lee, it was hysterical to watch. Like, if you were waiting to play the next game and there was a yeah, fast break, yeah. you'd go watch Juan on this move. And Juan would just come down, and all of a sudden the guy would D up, and next thing you know, he was eight feet away, and he was on the floor slipping, carrying his shoes. He was breaking ankles. Oh, he, he, would, ankles, yeah. he would go like this and then go, like, shake like a dancer, and you would just fucking fall apart. God rest his soul. He's dead now. But uh, we used to play in Lefty Cortina's backyard by Robert Fulton. Mm -hmm. Brian Smythe. Yeah. We used to go to Hoboken in those days yeah. and pick up Bob DuBois. Yeah, yeah. And you know what? Guys. I was thinking about those. When you mentioned OLG, I was thinking about those guys. Miller, Miller and DuBois. They both Miller. played at uh, BC. Boston College. BC, Boston yeah. College. Yeah. We would pick them up in Hoboken and bring them to North Bergen, yeah. to Lefty Cortina's backyard, and we'd play the whole afternoon, and they'd be slam dunking. I remember, like, that's what's unbelievable, too, is there's that feeling of, like, we got to win or we're gonna we're gonna be done for the day. Yeah, or we're not gonna be able to play because there's no, so many there's, guys there's waiting. Eight teams. Yeah, yeah. Eight five. I mean, just teams. that intensity was like oh, an unbelievable feeling. You know what I mean? Like th those are uh, 
things that definitely you know, I hadn't thought about that in a while, but just that mentality of like, all right, well, we got to bring it here. We're gonna be we're gonna be toast. We're, and then people then gotta, trade for you and shit. Yeah, <laughs> dog, fuck you, dog. You don't want to play D? Fuck you. Coco's on that team now. Fuck that. Fuck that. I already played three games with you. Fuck that. And then you get the an argument and shit like that. Yeah, whole, calling your own you're fouls. Right. You're right. The basketball thing did teach us a lot of crazy lessons. I remember one yeah. time on a bus, I fought it. I hadn't gone to the bathroom in like six days. I had like a clog in my asshole. And we played against East Orange Ghosts. The Ghosts. Was that an AAU team or? No, no. This East is Orange high, high School? This is high school. Yeah, okay. Was it the East Orange Ghosts or the Ghost of. I'm trying to think of what their of nickname was. The Ghost was. of. Not, not Cliff. Not, it was a black school. And they were called the Ghosts. That's all I fucking know. And I was scared. <laughs> That's all I know. You know what I'm saying? And we lost to them. And we went in the bus, and people were scared. And I hadn't gone to the bathroom for like three or four days. <laughs> and I remember farting, and cheerleaders were crying. Like they were crying because <laughs> they couldn't open the windows and shit. And then I would switch them up, and Mr. Barone said, oh, he's switching flavors. The girls were holding on to their uh, noses. Oh, my God. No, that was, you're right. But that, that, And that was like your Coco, too, like playing at, at prep in Jersey City. That whole league was an all-Jersey City league at that time. So you'd play St. Anthony's. It would be David Rivers and Kenny Wilson. You'd play, and they went to Notre Dame and Villanova. And then you'd play Ferris and Daryl Wilson went to Florida State. And then you'd play St. Mary's. It'd be Kenny Coleman. Uh, he played at New Haven. Like, so every, every game was like, a, was like a war, you know what I mean, of, of guys that were really talented. And I'll never forget, the guy that I had the toughest time – guarding was a guy by the name of Tracy Mitchell who played at TCU and we were working out up at UMass Lowell during the off season so we come into an open gym and this guy's out there playing and I'm playing against this guy and I'm literally like I gotta guess which way he's going because he's using me I just could not stay with him and he ended up being like right on the fringe of uh in today's world he would be like if he wasn't with the Celtics, he'd be with the main Red Claws. He'd be in the D League. You know what I mean? He was like on the fringe and like was it was one of the last cuts like three or four consecutive years. And it's like, you know, you you get to those moments like and it's like seeking out the best talent because you want to get better, you wanna raise your game, you wanna test yourself and see where you're at. And then you get to a point where it's like, wow, this is definitely a different this is a different level. And uh, Tracy was one of the. I'm friends with him on Facebook. You can find him there. And he's one of these guys that it would be great because I was big into like like the gear, like the t-shirts, and I'd have shirts. And so he would like give me like TCU gear, and I'd give him like you know I don't know. I probably had a stash of North Bergen stuff in my like a reversible. You know, we trade all these jerseys and stuff. But uh, but that, that was the the beauty of the game. You know the personalities, testing yourself, all the traveling, bouncing around. Did you, were you happy that you went to St. Peter's Prep, or did you wish you could have gone to North Bergen? You, you know, it's like I, I had you, a great time there. And you went to school with the Donofios. Yeah, they yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, you exactly. went to school with Mark. So, so you no, graduated with Mark. No, no. So with Frank, so Frank was a year older than I was. Frank went to prep, but Mark played at North Bergen, then Penn State, then the Packers. So Mark went to North Bergen High School. Frank went to prep, and so I had mixed emotions about it because I had a great time at prep. We had. Uh, you know, like a lot, there were a lot of things that, like, I probably may not have been exposed to if I had not gone there. You know, maybe I wouldn't have found, you know, well, I probably still would have played at Persian Field or Ocean Avenue or, you know, those, those types of leagues and, and stuff. But I, I think at the time, it was probably the, you know, the, a good fit. I played for Jerry Halligan, who was, and, and, I mean, look at these choices. So it was either playing for Matty Sabello at North Bergen, who was an absolute legend. Or Jerry Halligan, who was another legend. So you really couldn't go wrong there. I wasn't a fan of Sabella. What's that? I wasn't a big fan of that. Yeah, I, I you know, I really didn't didn't know Coach Sabella that well because I didn't play for him. But Jerry Halligan was like I off still the remember charts. his face. I still remember his little bald headed. He was like a science teacher, a math. Yeah, teacher yeah, or yeah, 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 yeah. And I used to see him in there. I was never a big Sabello guy. I was like, oh. I was a big Barone guy, you know. He right, was my seventh sure. Grade teacher. Yeah. He showed me how to shoot. You know, I lucked out because he was my seventh grade teacher, and right. we were tight. We were, when I got left back, I went to his class, uh-huh. and he fucking hated me. Really? And then he's like, "How's it feel? How are you gonna feel sitting in that class?" He was torturing me. Yeah. So I stole his keys 
after school. And I threw him in the dumpster and behind the kindling. <laughs> and about four hours later, he shows up at my house. Where's my fucking keys? I can't even get in my car. And I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. See you in September, bitch. <laughs> and I thought I was going to go to the eighth grade. No. I got left back and ended up in his class. Wow. So when I walked in the first day of school, I thought I was dead. Yeah. He never mentioned it again. And once I found out he was in the Hall of Fame. And yeah, yeah. He had done all that basketball The free stuff. throws in a row at 73 or something. I went in the yellow pages, and I would call him up at night and ask him for tips. And he would say, how did you get my number? <laughs> and I'd call him up until one day he said, come to my house Friday at 2. I took a bus up to 92nd Street, and we went to his house, and he showed me how to shoot. And we yeah. became, I, I took him to the premiere grudge match. Right, right, right. Three right, years right. ago. Yeah, That's how great. tired I yeah. am with Barone. Man. Yeah. So, we so, interviewed him for the Yeah, I was going to say, was it the same the house? documentary. We went to the house. Was it, it was that house? No. He lived, that, was his, that was his house. We went to his mother's house. Like That was my real basketball was Barone. You right. Know? And then even if he took over, I knew. I just did. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know what's funny? That you talk about all this stuff being positive. You talk about being negative. Since I was a kid, I've always been very honest. And I was always very honest with myself. You know, freshman year, I think, going into sophomore year, I said, okay, my father was 6'4", my mother's 5'2". <laughs> you know, well, how tall am I really going to be? Will I right. be six feet tops? Let's pretend I get to be six feet. That means I got to be one of the quickest fucking guards in the NBA. Yeah, yeah. Now, I was always quick, but not fast. There's a big right. fucking difference. There's a big difference between having quickness to cover somebody right. in the paint or there than me having to catch up to you once you it's shake. It's me. fifty feet wide, so ninety-four said, feet it. long. That's number right. two, yeah, I'm yeah. white. Number three, I'm white. <laughs> you know, I had kicks. I did have kicks because I worked at it. Right, right. There was a point where I had like a forty-inch vertical jump. Like when I was in the eighth grade, I was already grabbing the rim at right. 38th Street Field. Like, people were going crazy. I was missing the dunk by a fucking pussy here because it was 9 foot 10, the rim. <laughs> but I couldn't, you know, yeah. but at least I could grab the rim right. at the high school. Yeah. Yeah. I was windexing and shit my freshman year. Oh, yeah, 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 that was because, big. That yeah, was big. because yeah, because I fucking yeah. worked on my legs. You know, yeah. I, do, I did the weights. Bill Foster told me I did the sprints. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever they told me to do, I did to the fucking T. So it was just really weird that I just said to myself, all I wanted out of basketball was to play in the national championship game. That's all I ever wanted. My dream was to start. It's a big goal. That's, 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 that's big. That's yeah. I did not want to go to the yeah. NBA. I didn't want to do nothing. I wanted to be like Gregory Kelser. Right. From Michigan right. State. Who's a great guy, by the way. He, right, that's what I heard. Yeah, he, he's a great guy. He's, he's still part of the Pistons uh, broadcast well, team. He's a great guy. Because, yeah, he played like four games and that was it. Like, he just, in the, in the college, he was great. But yeah. in the NBA, he just fell apart. You know, and that happens sometimes. But that's all I wanted. Uh, from the time I saw yeah. them announce. Michael Corn his freshman year from Jersey City, New Jersey. My head almost exploded. And you know who else was in that game? And our buddy Jim Hager reminded me of this. One of the last conversations we had, I forgot to mention this guy, Marquette and Jimmy Boylan. Jimmy Boylan. Who now is an assistant with the Cavs. So he's been he's been with the Cavaliers for... Where was Jimmy Boylan from? Jersey, Jersey City? City. He was another Jersey City guy, right. yeah. Older yeah. than everybody. Yeah. And who yeah. did he play for? He play, he, so he, I think he, he went to Assumption... Before Marquette, Division II school in New England, believe it or not. But I want to say that he played for Rocky Pope at Hudson like uh, like Spinarkel did. I'm almost positive that Boylan went to uh, went to Hudson as well. Yeah, I, yeah, I could I be wrong. Jimmy Boylan did go to but, but you know what, and I don't want I don't want to dodge the the North Bergen or Prep High School question because I, I really no no no, I uh, no, just, no the, I, just to complete the thought like it sometimes it does think of me like. What what I think about is it would have been nice to have continued the journey in high school with my grammar school classmates because they were great kids. We had a great cohesive class. But, you know, my brothers had gone to prep. It was great tradition there. It it worked out great for me uh, playing. Gavin Cummings, who I mentioned before, who had come over from Guyana, we played together uh, Four eight years total, including the four at UMass Lowell, uh, three on varsity at prep. We played freshman ball together there, and then we had three years on var- uh, varsity at prep for Jerry Halligan. So I really wouldn't change a thing, but I do think about you know because I made great friends at prep, you know, in the classroom, and then 
uh, in Jersey City and, and, and uh, you know, around town as, we, as a, you know, as you evolve as a young kid in high school. But I do think about and, and you know, remiss slightly about, not slightly, but remiss just the kids I was tight with because we probably would have been even tighter. But, uh, but, you know, it goes, you can't change it. It is what it is, what it is and you kind of follow your, you know, your destiny. You do what you think is best at, uh, at the time. So It's just crazy because you guys all grew up together. Like, I lived in New York till 1973. And then I moved to North Bergen in 73, but I was still going to Catholic school in Carnegie. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. So my only connection to North Bergen was the weekends and the summers. Yeah, I yeah, would yeah. disappear. Right. I right. walked around that neighborhood when I first moved, and I'm like, this ain't for me. These yeah. fucking dirty kids. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not doing I'll hang out in the city. Right. I was still a city rat, and I was, and I, since my mom had the bar in Union City, I was right, a Union City right. kid. Yeah. So I was living yeah. in North Bergen. I was a Union City kid living yeah. by 29th Street and the whole thing. Right. By the time I went to McKinley, I didn't. I missed what all you guys did. Like, when did you move to North Bergen? Oh, I was born there. Okay, yeah, so. Yeah. I was born in Jersey City. Did you play Pee Wee basketball? Yeah, everything. For, you know, football. those coaches, Mr. Benna, Mr. Yeah, Fafaro, Frank Benna, Fafaro, Mike Fisher. All uh, those guys. All, like, unbelievable. All you, they still, if you go on Facebook, it's really weird. Like, the other day. Kevin Valentine yeah. posted a picture of the football team when he was like eight. Yeah. And yeah. like, those kids played all through. They won a state championship yeah, together. Yeah. Because they've been playing since they were eight. Like, these guys fucking knew each other. I didn't know that. Yeah. I yeah. didn't, you know, when I first went to McKinley, it was sixth grade. I didn't even start really hanging out in North Bergen until the seventh grade, the first time. Yeah. First time in the seventh grade. I didn't really hang out in North Bergen. And that's, and by that time, I was into basketball. Yeah. So I didn't really play the football thing. I didn't play PB yeah. football. I played, uh, set, they called it semi pro for Union City. It was like uh-huh. a 12 to 14 year old league. And I didn't like it. It just wasn't for me. Yeah. I, I wanted to play basketball. And right. I was going to karate and shit. So I, I would go to those courts. And that's when I started becoming friends with them. But my point is, like, you're one of those guys that was there the whole thing and then just high school went somewhere else. And it just yeah. wasn't you. Like like you said, even Frank D'Onofrio, yeah, who's yeah. tied with, my, with Mercy's godfather, James, you know, like, he just went to prep one day. Yeah. But the prep didn't have a football team. Well, no, they did, actually. They but, did, yeah. But then yeah. when did Mark go there? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Like, I, well, you know what? Like, football, I think, was different because... Like North Bergen was perennially good, and then prep was down in football. They just weren't very good in the '80s. And then Rich Hansen came in right around the time I was leaving, and then built that football program up. But they were very, very That's why weak. You didn't go there. And then it was weird because I was fortunate because basketball was good then, had not been good in the '70s at prep, was good in the, it was really good in the '80s. And like you said, like. So after eight years with Gavin Cummings, I mean, by the time you know you you play that long together, I mean, you, you just have that sixth sense of where someone is. Not, 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 not even you know offensively, but defensively, and all that type of cohesion and, and what have you. It's a, you know it's it's tremendous because it's really a uh, it takes on a culture, a, a, a feel, a vibe. I mean, look at you know obviously the Warriors, right? A rarefied air and how special. They are and watching them play, and like a lot, of, I think a lot of our people are. If you remember, and I was young at the time, but reminiscent of the Knicks back in the seventies with Willis and Clyde and Bradley and DeBusher and you know all those Earl of Pearl and all those guys. You know they were ball movement. I don't want to go too X's and O's here, too much in the weeds, Lee. But you know what I mean? Just that that whole cohesion and the defense that those guys play and that. Tenacity, you know. Everyone talks about the Warriors and their offense, but it's, that's really, to me, their sizzle is the offense. But their defense is second in defensive rating in the league, and they lead the league field goal percentage against three point field goal percentage against deflections, blocks, steals. I mean, they're just relentless uh, defensive. But anyway, but those things take on. You know, there's there's more to it than just the. Game plan, the execution. Okay, this is what we're, we're. But did anybody really think about like, not only they know what they want to do, but then they inculcate it into those players' current staff, joy, mindfulness, compassion, competition, and they actually do it. 
It's phenomenal. I, I think you know just the way they have the the ability to focus, execute, get it done. But those are the things that I think that are like kind of magical about the game. You know what I mean? It's just a uh, it takes on a kind of a life on its own. I think that's why we all fall in love with it. You know, and you talk about those kids playing together in North Bergen from eight on uh, and winning a, uh, eventually a state championship. I mean, there's something really. No, a few that's things what it in was. life that a few things in life that give you that. You know what I mean? That, that, and then again, they did it with basketball. Right, that core team played at Kennedy School. So I was always wondering, like for me, I wasn't part of anything. I was part of McKinley, and they didn't have a fucking legacy. They don't even talk about basketball yeah. there. They didn't even have a gym. So I was in the eighth grade. Is that right? They didn't have a yeah. gym. Huh. We, you had to shovel snow. Well, that's how about how, did you ever play at White Eagle Hall? I talk about not having a gym. St. Anthony's no, did not have no, a gym. No. Yes, yes, freshman year. That's right. We played them freshman year. And it was like, yeah, and the yeah. one basket was nine feet, and right. the other one was, it was a, a bingo big basketball. Court. It was unbelievable. Yeah, it was and, and those those battles were like th- those were also. We talked about this. You'd go in there and play, and at, at, at that time for us, it was you know David Rivers and Kenny Wilson, those guys. So you'd walk in and be uh, Massimino and Villanova, Digger Phelps at Notre Dame. Uh, was it Ray uh, Al McGuire retired? So, not, no, I'm, th- I'm thinking I'm thinking uh, Meyer at DePaul. But all these coaches would be the, these legendary coaches would be in Jersey City and White Eagle Hall. This business, you couldn't even shoot from the corner because it was the balcony from the bingo hall that you couldn't shoot. You, you know, you you had, you had to drive to the basket. And the, but anyway, but the, evidently they just the school's closing at St. Anthony's and then. Uh, they actually redid White Eagle Hall. It's gorgeous now. It's like a real... So now they're going to fucking close it. So now they fucking redo it. Let me give right. some shout-outs. Yeah, go ahead. Eric Walker, my main man. You got it, cocksucker. J. Blank City. Dominic Giannino. The Australian Warrior. Bunny Couch. Functioning Savage. My man Ray Taylor. Slim Chabby. Tony Mendoza. And Ty Moore. I gotta ask you some other questions. Yeah, I'm gonna ask you some questions about the characters that hang Absolutely. out about our hashways to see if you remember. Yeah, I always tell uh, Lee whenever we're talking in conversation, and he says something to me, I go, Lee, that thing is clean, Bobby. And there were these two idiots that used to hang out at Hashway at night. One was Chicha Bastich. He was a short guy that fixed cars, and the other guy was Bobby Pierce. He had glasses. He used to have like a, what do you call that when you have a, when you have a, <laughs> a cleft lip? A cleft lip. And really? Yeah, he used to, so they were into cars. <laughs> and he used to go, that thing clean, Bobby. Yeah, that thing, <laughs> they would just sit there and go, that thing clean, that thing clean, Bobby, that thing clean. You know, I think about the characters we grew up with before the show started. We were talking about just that area, okay, just that. It was hashways that ran, and it was a block away from North Bergen High School. And on that block, when I first got there, there was a, a grocery, not a grocery store, like a food store around the corner, like where you went for milkshakes and yeah, shit like yeah, that. Yeah, 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 that's right, yeah. The yeah. Bruin Bowl or something. Yeah, that's right, that's right. And then right, you yeah. had Nick's Pizza, and then you had Corky's, seven-day week. It was called Tom and Corky's. Then you had a bank that was the size of a hut that was robbed yeah. once by a guy on a bicycle, and he got away with it. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't even prepared for him to rob the fucking bicycle. <laughs> then you cross the street and there was a dry cleaner. And then you, yeah. you walked a little bit and there was a bar that had been everything. Lee, they tried to do everything in this bar. And then next to the bar was a trophy sneaker place. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know who? It was Brower. Dennis Brower had that. It was never it was open. Like a, it was like a sporting goods store. Yeah, it was never yeah, open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was never open. Yeah. It was only open like one hour a day and yeah. he sold sneakers. Right. So you got a good That's deal right. on yeah, sneakers yeah, yeah, from time yeah, yeah, to time. Yeah. And then next to him there was a pharmacy. And then there was Larry, L D. There was a, a hair cutting place there, a barber shop. A barber shop. Larry, yeah. And then yeah. it was all there, and that was it. That was your fucking world if you lived yeah. up there. That was it. Yeah. You went from the bank. But we grew up at this pizza place that the guy was fucking hilarious. Like the guy in today's society with kids. He would have definitely been shut down. <laughs> he would have definitely been shut down because it wasn't about even like that he cursed. No, no, it wasn't that the pizza was bad. The pizza was delicious. And yeah. the sandwiches, yeah. oh my God. Tremendous, yeah. They were Tremendous great. hot. See, Hashways had cold sandwiches. They had hot sandwiches. At night, you Like would a get, chicken cutlet? Oh, yeah. he yeah. had a. Veal. He had like a. 
he had something in that uh, Nick's meatball parm or something. You get two slices and a Nick's meatball parm. Oh my god! And you could put it on the tab because yeah, everybody yeah. had a tab in those days, Lee. He'd call you. He'd call you like racist names, but then he'd give you a tab. <laughs> he gave you a tab. Fucking. He'd extend credit. Fucking speak. I'm watching you. <laughs> <laughs> he called me the spick, a Villa Ayatollah Khomeini. Ayatollah. Because he had the beard, so he would make you make me nervous. <laughs> you walk around Ayatollah Khomeini. He would call him Khomeini. He would call me the spick, Veneri the Jew, because he would get the iced tea across the street. I mean, it was fucking constant, the nicknames he had for people. Sexy thing, beautiful thing <laughs> for women. Oh, I love you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he never was a pervert or nothing like that. What he was was a degenerate horse Yeah, yeah, you love the ponies. Yeah, he loved yeah. the ponies, and you'd be hungry some afternoons, and you'd go there, and it's be gone closed for one hour he would just shoot to the track yeah oh yeah exactly and yeah. bet all his horses at four you'd be fucking starving after school You're like god damn it i gotta go to hashways again and shit and it's like uh i, I told you john bot we gotta give john bot a shout out john pacing Bott. donut he said tommy parker wrote two words in my high school yearbook pacing donut it was a horse Did that he you gave a gamble me no no you no. didn't nothing 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 no, no. i was gonna ask what was it like because we've heard all the stories from Joey about what North... Like, North Bergen sounds like almost like a, like it's not even real. Like, it's like an, a city of outlaws. What was it like growing up as a kid who, who like... I wasn't an athlete, but it seems like me. Like, a little bit of the straight edge and, and sort of not as crazy as them. Like, what was it like? Was everyone like that? Or was there people there who... No, I was... I mean, I think it was a very, like, eclectic group of people. You know what I mean? That, you know, not... I don't think... Everybody was like that, you know what I mean? Like it was just, uh, you know, like basketball. I, th- I think sports, in a way, was kind of an escape. It, you know, was it was your identity, probably to a uh, to an extreme, you know, because you were only as good as your last game, and it's yeah. so tough if you weren't playing, or you know, we talked about that earlier. If if you didn't play well. It was hard. That was your identity. But there were just a cast of characters there. And but I th- I do think though that you thought every place else was like that. So you go to Jersey City and different neighborhoods. Yeah, it was like that. Yes. But then when you leave and you yes. get out of there, you're like, holy oh, shit! Oh my god! Not not every place is like this. You know, you go up into New England. It's right. Like, exactly. Yeah. But no, growing up, you were in there, and it was. You're right. You had uh, a couple of bucks. It was a quarter for an RC. Probably thirty five for an well, ice tea. Forty five cents for a slice. had the fucking company on Tully Avenue. Oh, that's so right, if you yeah. went down there and knocked on the door, they give you three sodas for a quarter. RC, right. they made them run on Tully Avenue. RC Cola. Yeah, they oh. bottled them right there on the corner yeah. there. So when we were kids. They were that. By my house, we had the Dan and yeah, milk. yoga. Yeah, 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 Dan yeah, and milk yeah, 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 yeah. And they had the yeah. tea company. So, well, how about Hoboken with it with uh, Maxwell House? Yeah, you could then be brewing coffee. The whole city would smell like coffee. Yeah, but. But that was like all you needed was a ball, like a buck, because you get a slice of pizza at Nick's for forty five cents, and that's all, that was your life. That's all you all you needed. You walk around the corner, you're at the courts, everybody's there hanging out. So it was it was an unbelievable place to grow up. It was tremendous. It was great. I, uh, but but I, I think that uh, you know if you looked at it, you probably had. You know, guys that were into sports, guys that they were into music, guys that were into Concerts. girls, guys that were into... Now, where were you when Hashway's burnt down? Were you on Kelly Boulevard? Were you around the corner? I don't think Did I was living there at the time. Where were I you? was in school. I think it was... 1984. Yeah, I was at... I, you, know, you know what? I was at UMass Lowell. It was my freshman year. So I was not we in North Bergen. A, we went to, a, you know, the town at the... I left... I left on August 25th of 83. I left. And I went to Colorado and I came back like February of 84. And the town was completely different. It was just a drug den. Huh. That's it. The, the cocaine from West New York, Union City, it had just taken over. I mean, huh. there, was, there was a rest on 80th Street by Lubes' house, uh-huh. by Johnny, what was those two spent Lopez brothers? Yeah. Yeah. They were fucking out of their mind, those two knuckleheads. <laughs> they used to sell their mother's cancer medication. They used to drive around shooting cats and dogs. It was fucking crazy yeah. down on that side. But all those houses were getting... It was just a different city, you know? And everybody was fucking doing drugs. Like, it just... 
And, you know, you walked into Ashways, next thing you know, you're in the freezer doing coke. <laughs> you know, you're like, what the fuck? I used to come here to eat. I don't even eat here no more. I come in here to do coke and drink champagne. And, and uh, Why do they have champagne in a deli? Because at that time, they had a liquor store. Right, right. They moved over. See, they had a sandwich place. I was telling, yeah. I was telling Billy that I could, you know, how FX does American crime stories or American horror stories, right? Yeah, I could do a whole story about life about the Hashways because they had a deli, and the deli was doing just fine. Turkey sandwiches, roast beef, fresh roast beef, fresh turkey. You who's, you know. Buttered roll, which was oh, delicious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tremendous, the yeah. jelly and cream cheese on the poppy seed roll was delicious with a yoo-hoo in the morning. And they got greedy. There was a liquor store on the corner. And they bought into that liquor store. You learn from watching in your life. I learned a big lesson from that. Be happy with what God gave you. You had a beautiful deli. They were I was telling Billy that at three o'clock. The father would run the lunchtime deposit at one o'clock, right across the street to the bank. But at about four, four thirty, he would walk home with a brown sack filled to the gills, <laughs> filled to the gills. They were making money there, guys. I mean, when you went in there at lunchtime and all the yuhus were gone, and Mrs. Hash would give me a case and go restock it for me. That's a case of fucking yuhus they sold already during lunch. They would sell sandwiches. I mean, you go in there, the shredded lettuce. If you think of anything yeah, that yeah. stood out, it was that shredded lettuce would stick out of the sandwich. And you people think we're crazy here. You know, Lee knows how much of a fanatic I am about food and how loyal I am and how, you know, for years I didn't eat sandwiches when I left North Bergen. Like nothing would measure up. Nothing, yeah, yeah, nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was such a simple sandwich. Roast, the roast beef there, she made it fresh. Not with Thumans, not Boy's Head. She bought it every night, took that rope off. When she got home from work at 5 o'clock, when she got home from the deli, the deli stayed open till 9. When they got home at 5, they would start cooking for the next day. Wow. And it, it, we, we had a relationship with the Hashways. Yeah, you had a relationship. That, like, I, Nobody. I, this is why we yeah. know everything about them. So I, I, I would go, my mom would send me over with, like, my mom would cook, like, pot roast at home or something. And she would send me over there, and and Ann or Joe would slice her pot roast. Right, and then and I take it home, and then I would feel so guilty. I'd walk in. I can remember walking in, and Joe would be cleaning the slicer, and I'd be walking in like he's ready to go home, and he always would take it, always would take it, even though he was like you know one foot out the door, ready to. I mean, it's just unbelievable. Like we said, like family, you know. Uh, they were obviously, a family. yeah, yeah. But once they took over that liquor store in '84. Everything changed. Drugs was fueling them. It was, if you went in there at 8 o'clock at night, you couldn't. It was a fucking, it was crazy. It was crazy. There'd be 15 people in there, coked up to the gills. And people coming in buying lottery tickets. Because <laughs> they bought lottery tickets and booze. And you'd stay up. It was embarrassing. And we'd all go up there and help him. The quicker he stocked the shells, the quicker we'd go out and party. So 10 of us would go up there and stock every fucking shelf in 10 minutes. All the beers, all the booze. And we'd sweep, let's get the fuck out of here. So we'd go party. And it got so bad. By the end of 84 that summer, that town was in there. Ray goes walking around with a microwave oven to cook cocaine and a, and a bazooka. I mean, everybody was going off. And by that time, it was coming in in more abundance than you were snorting. So people were giving it to you on credit, which made the situation even worse. So we all went to a place called the Maikai. Yeah, oh, I remember the Ma on Kennedy Boulevard. I remember Kennedy the Maikai. Boulevard. Yes, they got closed, shut down for uh, selling cat oh. and for uh, using the grass from the cemetery. <laughs> for what? What were they using grass for? You know, when you go to the dish and they have all that grass, uh, no, all they that never... lettuce and all that shit. <laughs> oh, they were mowing the lawn at the at the cemetery. And sprinkling it on your fucking food and shit. How's that for you? They found a bunch of cats and lizards and fucking iguanas, and it was crazy. We would go there first at 11 and drink a couple zombies and get fucked up, and then we'd shoot out to a giant game and get more fucked up at the giant game 
and then we'd shoot the fucking corkies at about six or seven, and it was it. That was it. He had two dollar bluebirds, which was bluebird orange juice, bluebird orange juice with uh, smearing off vodka or something. Two dollars a piece. You know, he was a nice boy, Billy Hiranda. We get the hash, we get the we get the corkies on this beautiful Sunday. It had to be like Sunday. If you look at the lineup, look at the uh look at the Giants nineteen eighty four winter schedule for football. It was like September twenty fifth, nineteen eighty four when they played the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And fucking that linebacker, that running back. He was the... He, Joe James, Morris? James Wilder. Oh, okay. James okay. Wilder. So what do you want to know? What the day the, they, they, they the, lost the Buccaneers? Yeah. November 11th of 84. Well, it was November 11th. Fuck, I thought it was September 23rd. <laughs> it was November 11th. No. Oh, wait, oh no, they did. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. They played twice. What was the first time? September 23rd. You're absolutely right. You see what I'm wow. saying, dog? Wow. You see what I'm saying, dog? You that? see what I'm saying, dog? <laughs> you can't pull one over on Uncle Joey. Because I never forgot that date. Because from there, we went to Ash. We went to Corky's. And Hashways was closed on Sunday. And all of a sudden, we're in Corky's getting fucked up at 6 o'clock in the afternoon. And all of a sudden, you hear fire trucks pulling up. And we're like, what the fuck? And all of a sudden, they're kicking down the door at Ashways, and they're going in there, and the, the windows are burning, and what the fuck? And we're all outside, and people were crying. I mean, people fucking drove up there and were crying. Yeah, yeah. Because I remember my mom calling me and telling me about it, because I was yeah. up at school, yeah. And it burnt down to the fucking crisp. It took a couple months to reopen, yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'll never forget that years later, they said that, uh, one of the brothers was downstairs smoking crack. Did you know that story? You heard uh, something. Yeah. yeah. Fucking hilarious. Only in North Bergen. He put the crack pipe. He was smoking crack downstairs. And all of a sudden he heard something. As you do. Huh? He heard something. And he put the crack pipe down. And he walked to see what it was. And the crack pipe, like the wind got it or something like this. This is a story I heard. The uh, The torch fell over. And the torch burned something. That's and then North Bergen covered it up, and they said it was an electrical fire or some shit. That's what the word was on the street. Only in North Bergen can you hear something so funny. That was that was the thing about my hometown. That you said something beautiful tonight, Billy. You said that when you leave North Bergen, you expect that every place is like North Bergen, and that's the same thing that happened to me. I thought that when I left North Bergen, people were going to be like that. I thought that everybody had the same mindset as we had. I thought right. that, you know, I'm very proud to come from there because I came from there at a time when you don't have earrings, neither do I. You don't have any tattoos. I don't have any tattoos. You know, if you see the kids from that generation, we didn't fall for anything. We didn't. We didn't fall for anything. Yeah. I mean, we fell for nothing we fell for drugs you know not not you and your brother but you know if everybody's like this in North Bergen nobody was into yeah. tattoos at that time you couldn't really have long hair they were like these little unspoken type rules that if you want right. to get along yeah, in North yeah, Bergen yeah. this is what's gonna work bro you know and I got it at an early age you know when they got you a job you worked hard like that yeah, yeah. little North Bergen job you see the program and yeah, you get a job yeah, there yeah yeah, yeah absolutely the, all up that at the shit, park or whatever yeah, you know yeah. like I remember asking uh, Mike Runney's nephew when he came out he was in the Navy and he came up to spend the week with me and I go so how was Hashways growing up and he goes I never ate at Hashways growing up and my heart broke like you grew up next to one of the greatest delis that you'll ever eat on in your life. The only thing they didn't have that I didn't care was wet mozzarella. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's interesting. They never yeah, had yeah, wet yeah, mozzarella. Yeah. They never really had yeah. that hard bread. Right. I, would, I would go up to the place on 91st Street, yeah. which is still yeah. there, not Roma, but the other place that was there for $3 in those days. They gave you a sandwich, Lee. Lee, me and you cannot finish it. No way. $3, Lee. No way. Me and Mike Runny cannot finish it. Ponte Corvo, no, 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 no. On top of 91st Street. On top of 91st Street by the gas name. station yeah, that Ashley yeah, robbed. Yeah, yeah. Right across the street. They used to be an Italian deli. They made an Italian sandwich for $3, Lee, in 1982. You could not finish. 
stacked with mud salami from uh, Kabagul, fucking uh, the other shit, the, the, the prosciutto, ham, provolone, two types of cheese, lettuce, vinegar, oil, olives. You couldn't finish it. Jesus. And then the Palmas. The Palmas, yeah. The Palmas. Yeah. Then you had Roma pizza, yeah. which was fucking tremendous. Roma was tremendous, yeah. They used yeah. to have the Stromboli, dog. That if you eat that shit in Vegas, your head would blow up in the one in North Bergen. <laughs> they used to, used to also make a shrimp parmesan sandwich. They used to all. Then you go down from there, and there was the other kid. Soul Pizzeria. Soul Pizzeria. Pizzeria. Joey, Joey Rotundi. Joey Rotundi. Yeah. Rotundi. And his dad, Trem- Phil, and his mom. They Phil, were tremendous, yeah. Pizza. Yeah. Yeah. Tremendous, yeah. tremendous pizza. Yeah. Yeah. Tremendous pizza. We were blessed with tremendous pizza. This is why I'm the way I am, Lee. This is why I'm the way I am. You know. See, that's the common to me. That's the common denominator. Like a, a fancy word for it would be uh, authenticity. But people are just real, and I think the reason why there's a such a strong bond and love for you is just because you're real, uh, and there's just a, a a toughness about people I think that we grew up with like a resiliency like a uh, like a fire that everyone had and has and has just kind of channeled it in whatever they were passionate about you know what I mean and that's you have the to have it you have yeah. to have that passion or if not you get eaten up you get yeah, and yeah, you get left was, behind or yeah yeah, 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 yeah it was yeah, something yeah. weird like I see the kids I grew up with now like Veneri me you oh none of us have tattoo we wouldn't even think about it like that would just be no no bueno. Like nobody really had long hair. We just, you know, these kids were you know, were fucking athletes. Like I was the only dropout. These guys were athletes, and they still smoked a little pot and they still drank and they still robbed beer trucks. You know where where we came from, jocks had a different. Jocks were like a little bit fucking a little crazier, a little bit on the crazy side. But I thank myself every day for being. From North Bergen, yeah. New Jersey. And I think the other thing, too, was, like, I, I was ver- very thankful to, like, the older guys, because they would always look out for you. You know what I mean? Like, you just got, like, Vic Saletti. We talked a little bit about, like, Jimmy Miller and those guys at Blitzhofer down at 82nd Blitz. Street. They would, like, look out for you. So, like, and, and with my brothers, I never, it, you know, I just got squashed. I, ne- I never really had the opportunity to get too far off the rails, not to mention my mother, who was, you know, rock at Gibraltar. I mean, there was no, I was not going to get too far out of line because you know he's had a great family great support system great friends but the older guys in the neighborhood really looked out for you i think and they Definitely. you know they just you know they cared enough to uh to you know kind of just keep you in keep you in line it's crazy how i look at you and if i close my eyes i could still see you with the basketball with the shorts on Playing the ball between your legs, calling us all out. Who wants some? You know, <laughs> who's gonna get some of this today? You know, Who wants it? You and Who Tommy Parker it? bothering yeah. us and shit, like trying to fucking break the, up balls. We talked about the high arc of by Parker. Yeah, the high arc of by Parker. It was just a. It was such an innocent time, you know. And uh, I go when I used to go back. I would call all everybody and say, "Look, I get in that one. I'll meet you at Ashley's at three thirty. And I'd meet 15 people at one shot, done. I'd kill every bird with one stone. You tell all your stories, you eat your little ham and cheese sandwich, you get your little rice pudding. Lee, they had a rice pudding. That was phenomenal. I love the rice pudding. I love the rice pudding. <laughs> then I turned Ralphie May on to the rice pudding. And Ralphie May would fly in Newark and just go get rice pudding by the tub. <laughs> they would make rice, Ralphie May, the whole tray. A fucking rice pot. It was delicious, with the cinnamon and the fucking whipped cream. You could, you never had better rice pudding than that. The macaroni salad was to die for. Yeah, yeah. The potato salad was to die for. You know what my wife loved was the uh, seafood salad. I liked the tuna. Okay, yeah. here's I my question about guy. the tuna. Did they put anything in it like celery or weird? Okay, I can now. now that's how you know it's a good place. She I hate would that. Take the tuna. I would watch her in the mornings. She'd empty the tuna and she'd break it all by hand. Oh. And then she'd put the mayonnaise, a little salt and pepper. That's all you need. And she'd give it to you by the cup. So you'd get a medium cup of tuna or a large cup (laughs) of tuna and eat tuna. You didn't have to eat the bread. She was 20 years ahead of the game. (laughs) Way before the fucking carbs. (laughs) No, I, uh, that was my problem. 
And that's why I think I gained. I never talked about these stories because I thought everybody had them. Right, right. When I left North Bergen, I'm like, okay, so who gives a fuck? I, <laughs> but I, I never forget one time when I was growing up, I was at a friend's house that he had a reputation for being a big party guy. It was that winter, 84, when North Bergen was just going nuts. And I'll never forget this scene. We were in this basement. It was a Sunday night. There had to be 20 North Bergen kids in there. And you'd think it was Friday night at 8 o'clock. And these guys had all been going strong since Friday. Same clothes. They had been the city. And I'll never forget that these kids walked in. That were They came with somebody from North Bergen. I forget who brought them. There were three kids from Cliffside Park. And they came. They showed up at like four. And they were like, yeah, we want to drink with you. And it was a great time. But there was somebody in that room that kept taking out packages of drugs. And finally, one of the kids from Cliffside looked at the other two and he goes, we have to get out of here. Like, these guys are just crazy. And they mm-hmm. left and everybody started laughing. Like, it was right. like a scene from a biker movie. <laughs> Like, they really ran out of it. Like, this is just too crazy. And I always sat there going, you know, is it us? I mean, what was it? Was it something in the water that made us crazy? I still remember one Halloween when everybody showed up with animals. Okay. I was call- I got a call, like, at 8 o'clock that we were going to this fucking Halloween party dressed as garbage to just show up behind the high school at 6.30 that they had cut the bottoms out of garbage cans and you had a they put suspenders on the garbage cans so you had to wear shorts and put the garbage can over you and then get a bag a brown bag we got from hashways and we crazy glued it to the top of the tin so you could put the glue on the cap on your head and you had a garbage can on your head and then we took strings and somebody went to the pet shop and got like 30 mice and we took strings and we tied the tails of mice. Oh. <laughs> every, every kid does this. Listen to this. And we tied the other end to the top. Oh. So that you were walking around and the mice were hanging off your garbage can. Yeah. Just by the tails. Fun. Biting down. Like 10 of us showed up at this Halloween party with these garbage cans on, dressed as garbage, with actual spaghetti boxes in us from Hashways. We all took all the boxes. And we didn't stink like garbage or anything. We just were dressed like garbage. So somebody fucking, I, I think it was Mike Runny. This is my sophomore, this is my junior year. I think it was Mike Runny in front of all these kids. Got up on the stage without saying a word. I'll never forget this is plain as day. All the, you know how kids are. Like, ha, oh, ha, ha. Everybody's like, yeah. oh, you look great. It was a Halloween thing. And this kid got up and he goes, hey. And everybody turned around and he took the first string and he took the mouse and mm-hmm. like this. He opened his mouth and he dropped that mouth, that mouse in his uh-huh. mouth and he bit that fucking thing in half and blood squirted out of his face Jesus and Christ. you heard people puking. The girls were yelling <laughs> and shit. <laughs> I still remember hearing the girls just lose it. Like this, yelling, screaming. Those wimps. And all of a sudden, everybody at the same time took those mice and started biting their heads No, no, off. no, no, no. Yes, we did. And we started, I bit that mouse head off, and I spit that head up into the air. I could taste the blood. Oh, my God. It was fucking horrible. I'm surprised I'm not dead today from doing that shit. And a bunch of them were eating the fucking mice. They were taking the heads off the floor what? and chewing on the heads. It was terrible. It's but, because you got that mold. Oh See, my God! Your, He's gonna be fine stuff. from the mold. There now. was a, like for for a year or two. Oh my God! A bunch of those idiots were eating shit at parties, so they would go to parties and take a bottle and break it with a hammer and start eating the glass at the party. Somebody saw somebody eat a bicycle on David Letterman in those <laughs> days, and they wanted to eat a fucking bicycle. I mean, these guys were crazy. You have no That's, fucking oh ideally. I'm surprised like, if, if anyone even brought, like, one mouse into, like, my high school dance. Like, they wouldn't have made it, like, three feet. They would have been tackled by, by, the, by like, the Listen, janitor or something. When he bit that fucking mouse's head off. What do you mean? You can't just say him now. The, you just said everyone did no, it. No, but the first guy that did it, <laughs> when he bit that fucking head off and that blood squirted out of his mouth, 
you thought Godzilla was in town. Even the teachers were yelling. They didn't know what to think. The poor teachers in that high school didn't know. That's why I'm saying that your mom was like, your mom was like, listen, I go to Ashways. I know what goes into that high school. I can't have you go over there. Those kids are fucking animals. Do you think you like ruined the careers of any teachers? Like they left, like they were like 26 and had like full of hope. And they had you guys for like a year or two, and then they they left the teaching profession. You must have just destroyed. When your- I was in grammar school, I went to grammar school with pretty much civilized animals. <laughs> McKinley School, because it had the people from Twenty Sixth Street Park, yeah. and they had like nuclear waste over there under those buildings. Something was over there <laughs> That's right. that fucked those kids up. Let me tell you something. Nuclear waste. In those days, North Bergen had a thing that if you were sixteen and you were in the seventh grade. They had to automatically put you in the pilot program, and you went to high school. You're 16 in the seventh grade. I like that that happened so often that they had a rule about it. Because Spanish kids came from Cuba, and they couldn't speak the language. Oh, okay. So until they couldn't figure out the English, they would leave them back. <laughs> so they would leave them back for three fucking years. These kids were... They, they, when I got to the eighth grade, there was a kid named Peter Jimenez. He was like 16 in the, eight, in the seventh grade. He had a beard... He had a mustache. He drove his sister to school every day, like a driver's <laughs> permit and shit. And, you know, it was it was McKinley for me when I left Sacred Heart School for Boys was a complete three sixty. Huh. Like I had never seen yeah, that even yeah. in New York City. I went to school really? PS one sixty six. I was a little on the young side. I was only in the third grade. If anybody was doing anything bad, it was me in those days. They got thrown out of there because I was stealing the teacher's edition. And sell them to other students for this <laughs> for the small two dollars and shit. But when I went to McKinley, that was my three years at McKinley. I could write a book about. Yeah, I'm sure you could. I saw Louis Alvarez punch Leo Gattoni right in the fucking face. I saw an eighth grader punch the principal of the school in the eighth grade and almost knocked him out. The principal took like three steps. And Louis, he he graduated. In fact, he's still on my he's my Facebook friend, Louis Zaldivar. I saw a parent beat the fuck out of a teacher at that school. I mean, at three o'clock, I saw a teacher get arrested at that school. He ended up going to prison for like seven years for fucking the mayor of Weehawken. I just had a cup of coffee. No, go ahead, go ahead. You have no fucking idea, Lee. Jesus Christ, I don't. That's. No, this was crazy. McKinley School was completely crazy. And then I ran into Carmine Balzano, and he beat up the teacher. They beat up the teacher twice. This was a fucking a Western. This was a, a Wild Wild West type fucking production. And, and like, no one... Because you, you would go to New York, and you would see... So you were just around craziness all the time? like just, All the time. Oh. All the time. All the time at that and the people, you know, it was just weird. I quit karate, and I went with the circle. I hit so the was number. Karate before basketball. I was thinking about that. Karate was during basketball, and the main reason why I quit karate was for basketball. I quit karate in the eighth grade, oh, so okay. I could be ready for freshman year. I didn't want it bothering. I didn't want it fucking torturing me. So you were you were like kind of an athlete. Yes, that's. Pr- but even though I was considered a jock, I was still a druggie. I was still crazy. We weren't jocks like the ordinary jocks. That's what blew your mind. We weren't jocks like ordinary jocks. We were jocks that were also junkies. And everybody knew it. That we were smoking pot and doing acid and doing THC crystal. We were taking it fucking deep. And Am I proud of this? No. I was a dumb kid. I can't imagine. I mean, it's just, it, I, there's no, it doesn't, I can't even relate to it at, at 15, 16. I don't think I had my first, like, and, like uh, smoke of like a joint until I was 18, I think. I drank a little bit in high school, but barely. You know, I, I wanted to bring uh, Billy on just to show you that there was also decent people in Buck <laughs> Bergen, also. You know, they weren't just fucking animals. That, uh,. You know, we weren't just animals. I mean, but you know what? Like, there were things that happened that like you almost forget about. Like, I can remember a fight breaking out one day, and I was at, like about eleven on my corner, and uh, yeah, one thing leads to another, and a guy he's got another guy on the ground, he's got a knife to his neck. So it's like you know, like some of those things you remember because you know you probably maybe you've never heard someone scream for their life, but 
that that that, that creates like a, a a searing memory you know what i mean that but again that was luckily it didn't escalate after that let him go and the whole bit but you kind of you just kind of roll with it but it was uh you know it was never a dull moment that's for sure it was very educational and it's uh i think that the I mean, you ended up becoming what you do. I think it has a lot to do right. with no, no, what totally. you learned at Ash Ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All of life, life's lessons, like you described that couple of... Okay, listen, whether you go from 91st Street down to 6th Street, or if you go from 76th to 79th, all, all of life lessons are right there. They were. They were really right there. It's true. Very true. It's funny how if I think about stand-up comedy... I think about freshman basketball getting on the number one bus and just tormenting that poor bus driver. From the minute you get on that bus on 79th Street, yeah. you start singing The Odd Couple and <laughs> fucking The Honeymooners. And, and by the time you get to 50th Street, he actually pulls over and goes, are you guys going to knock it off or do I got to throw you off the bus? And then the second place, the early roots of comedy were right in front of Hashways. Right. Right in front of that, you know, with eight other funny people. Now, it wasn't Cramden driving that number one bus. No, was no, no. It was, no, no, it was no, just, no, no, it was just really weird how those, my lessons in front of that deli, us standing in front of that, cracking jokes, you know, like just, uh, it's who I am today. Yeah. It really, yeah. you know, I'm into food because of that deli. I'll mm -hmm. argue to the death with anybody. And I'll bring back up, and we'll win any argument with that deli because that deli was more than good. It was who we were. Like I said yeah. earlier, it was our identity. You know, tabs. Right. Nobody's right. got tabs. But yeah, and the other thing, Coco, that maybe you overlook because you're too close to it is the uh, like just the con the art of conversation. And like you know what I mean, like that. Some now everybody I'm um, as guilty as anybody. You're on your phone, you're texting. Like Parker says to me every now and then, enough with the texting. And he'll pick up the phone and call. But you know what I mean, like there, I think there you really learned how to how to socialize, how to uh, you know bridge gaps. Whether it was you know uh, Spanish people, black people, people that were different than you, older people, younger people. You know what I mean, like I, I felt like it really stretched your horizons. Uh, and you learned how to how to get along, basically. Funny, pretty funny, interesting. You said that. I won't take a text from nobody from North America. You won't. Yeah, I noticed that you're not a bit. Yeah, yeah. Especially if you're from North America. Right. If I find your text and you're from North America, I do not right, contact right, you. Right. 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 I don't get text. I won't get text. Yeah. Unless, unless you call me and say, Joey, I'm sending you a text message. I won't get right, the text for three right. or four days. And by that time, I don't even look at it. I just yeah. erase it because anybody who's close to me knows if you text me. I'm you, I know it. that. I know that with you. You're not so a texter. So if I get yeah, a text yeah, from yeah. you, yeah. there's numbers. Or like a, four days later, they tell me I found something. I, I forget what area code it was. I love these people that just talk to you on a text. Right. And they don't even tell you who they are. They identify themselves. Like, I'm not going to call you back anyway. <laughs> but it's just your text messages, when I find, like, 26 of them at one shot, that's, <laughs> that's when I get them, when I get, like, 32 at one shot, and I just press edit all of them. You get rid of all of them. Yeah, I don't even read them. See, I always feel like if it, it, it well, listen, there's a time, there's certainly a time and a place for it. You know there's what I mean? no time and a place for it in my world. Is it in your world, is not? Not even yeah, close. Yeah, not See, even, like, I don't but, ever want a text message yeah, from somebody, yeah. because if it's important, the chance right. of me getting to the slim and none because of your stupidity. Call a motherfucker. Right. If you right. want somebody to know something, call that yeah. motherfucker. I don't play with text. I don't yeah. want them. Good for you. That's good. I don't want them. I don't, especially when it comes to business. Is that right? Yeah. Especially. How about, you, how about this? If you text me for business, yeah. I won't do business with you. There you go. I don't like want to do business like with you. I don't want to do business with you. Got to pick up the phone. Yeah, I don't give a fuck if you're ten or eighty. I do not. <laughs> Ask Lee. We laugh our asses off. We laugh because if you're my brother, you know not to. So I yeah, don't really give yeah. a fuck. If you text me, it's because you're not close to me. So I don't right, really give a fuck. Right. I don't really. My agents know not to text me. Anybody yeah. that's close to me in the industry knows. Do not text him because you're not going to get a reply. He's not even going to get it. He's right. not going to get yeah. it because I'm not into him. 
I don't yeah. want to have to put my glasses on and read. And I, you know, then, and then the other thing when, when I was getting them and I do get a text, it's just too annoying. <laughs> it's just too annoying. Well, you know what happens is you, you, what time you, you, five. What time is the Nick game? Six thirty. What time are we meeting at Hashway? It's eight. That's good. I can live with that one. I can live with that one. But the short stories and the, the no 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 the ninety two all night long no 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 no. You got one good text and I got one good answer. And after that, there's no more fucking texting. I'm not gonna sit here typing a short fucking story. Because you don't want to talk on the phone. So you open the door to that. If you go with one, I hear you. Because then, then it, it, it may never end. That's I why I yeah. said no. Yeah. No. Yeah. No, I'm not doing it. See, I feel like if, no. if it's... There are time-sensitive things I love and I think it's a great place for it. But I do feel... I agree with you that there are things that if... It, like, if we're friends, you're going to call. It's important enough. You and don't expect, like, an email like that. I'm... You know, like, you get people that are going to email you. email me. Yeah. I'm, I'm that's, an, that's another thing. Like uh, all of a sudden, I'm obligated to email you back because you were too lazy to pick up the phone and call me. If it's that important, you it's know. so weird how if you allow that game, that game yeah. will happen. You know, it's just yeah, like basketball. Yeah, 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 yeah. You let them fast. But break. see, I have people too that like will text. Like you know, it, it, people text. Hey, can you come on the show to talk about? The playoffs. So that's, that, that, but I'll, I'll respond to those because no, no. those are people I'm friends with, I have a relationship with. No, I'm going to do no. that. I but want, you don't like that. No. I don't want yeah. a text message whatsoever yeah. on my phone. When you text me, you're telling me you're not close to me. Right, you don't right, know right. not to call me. So right. I don't want to do business yeah. with you. It's the weirdest thing. When I was a young guy, I walked into Mr. Biggs in, in North Bergen. They had one in Hoboken and they went in North Bergen. Oh, he's talking about Biggie's. No, Mr. Biggs. Mr. Biggs. It was John Benders and the Benders. Okay, okay. And uh, one of the biggest lessons I learned was I walked in there when they knew the family. So I could walk in there and say, let me get a, a hero, and they'd give me whatever the fuck I want. Yeah. And one day I was hanging out, you know, wiping tables down. I was always very grateful if you gave me a sandwich. I'd wipe yeah. the table down and throw the garbage out or whatever. And uh, I said, how come you're always here, Jimmy? Whenever I come here, you're always fucking here. Get out. He goes, I'm looking for help. And in fact, he picked up like a handful of applications. And he threw them down. And he goes, I got help, but I'm not going to hire none of these people. I'm like, why not? It's just a fucking... I was like a kid, yeah, you know. Yeah. I thought you could just hire people. I didn't know you had to check references yeah, and shit. Yeah. And there used to be a box in those days. In the 70s, 80s, and 90s, there used to be a box on applications. And it said, if you f- do not answer the questions in this box unless there's a checkup on top. It's that easy. Unless there's a check up on top, don't answer these oh, questions. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. So gotcha. people would fill out those questions. He wouldn't hire them because they couldn't listen. They don't pay attention to details. If they don't pay attention yeah, to yeah, details. Yeah, yeah. And I always listen to what he said. And he goes, I treat my life like this. If you don't fall under certain category, I'm not wrong. So when you text him, you're telling me that you yeah, don't even know me. Yeah. yeah. Because if yeah. I, especially North Bergen people, when I get a text from somebody from North Bergen, I don't reply to them. Yeah. They should be ashamed of themselves. Yeah, yeah. They were raised better. They were raised True. better. Yeah. You know, yeah. they hit me up for like tickets or something. I won't call them back. Call right. me, dog. I know, you, especially people I know 30, 40 years. Oh, yeah. There was somebody I called from North Bergen about three weeks ago. And for some reason, I haven't talked to this guy in a year because of his text messages. Really? He yeah, never yeah, stops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's times I call him and he'll text me back. I could see you that's texting me. Yeah, yeah that yeah. really gets yeah, yeah, me. That, that's, yeah. that really gets me. That means <laughs> I won't be talking to you for another year. <laughs> right. And finally, the other day he called. And he goes, dog, I've been texting you for a year. I haven't gotten one of them. Right. Really? Nope. Next time, call. Yeah. That's yeah. it. Yeah. I, I, I know you 50 fucking years. I did drugs with you. We did a thousand things together. No. I didn't get one of them. Oh, no. I don't get nothing. You know me. I haven't gotten anything in years. The only text he ever sends yeah. is pictures of food. Whenever he goes back to New Jersey, I get like randomly I get now, like four pictures. And you're, and you're headed back. Well, you're going to be on the island, right? I'm going to be on the island. So I won't Not this won't. weekend, next weekend. Yeah, I won't fucking go to North Bergen. Not even in a fucking cold. It's, yeah, that's like a different world if you're going oh, on no, the no, island. No, yeah, no, no, yeah. No. It's June. Oh, yeah. For, I mean, forget it. Yeah. Fuck yeah. you. On a Friday. Yeah. yeah. They, yeah, offered yeah. Me, they offered me They offer me the theater, the Paramount Theater in Long Island. Like next weekend, 
Friday night at 8 o'clock. I was like, are you people retarded? <laughs> are you people retarded? Give me Saturday, but I ain't involved in no Friday. Fuck you. Because everybody's going down the shore. Oh. Long Island's busy on Friday nights. Everybody's going Oh, yeah, Hampton. forget it. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. You're dead. You're dead. It's it's seven hours or something somebody was telling me one time on a Friday. It's insanity, yeah. To yeah North it's Berg. crazy. I yeah. don't need to go to North Berg. I don't want nobody coming over. People either. can come see you. You're going 3,000 miles. You're going to no, be out no, on the no, island? No, no. I told I told Timmy Holloway yesterday. Forget, yeah. And somebody else last week. Don't even come, please. I don't yeah. want to see nobody. This is my weekend to relax. <laughs> I'll be in North Berg in July 29th at... Uh, oh, is that right? No, I'm at the Borgata. And oh, half yeah, of, yeah, and yeah. Half yeah. of North Berg. We'll be there. Perfect. I'll that's perfect. That's yeah, perfect. That works. Everybody. Until that, that works. time, I don't want to see nobody. Yeah. I don't want to see nobody. I don't want to go to North Berg. I don't want nobody from North Berg coming up to Long Island. <laughs> I want to be left the fuck alone this weekend. You know me, dog. What's up, Lee? I, I, I don't know what I'm more higher on, the stars or the mold. I think the mold might have the like, mold is fucking tremendous here. You might have just created your whole new brand, a brand new edible. You have to like get let. I the, can't believe it's like when you let cheese get moldy. Maybe maybe there's like some hidden secret. Maybe like the THC intensifies. I had a taste of a weird taste in my mouth before. <laughs> like I sucked the cock like a moldy dick. But after a gallon of water dick? and ten fucking bong hits, I'm all right now. Now what? Uh, tell these people what you do. The sports report. Nine yeah. Five. So you know what, Coco, I do. Uh, Lee, I do. Uh, two sports updates, 26 and 56 after the hour, 5 a.m. to 9 a.m. Pacific time on KFBK, which is a you know uh, an iHeart radio station based in Sacramento. So it's just you know your basic like WINS, you know they do the wheel news, traffic, weather, business, sports, you know rinse and repeat. And then during the basketball season, I'll work for you know a couple of different entities as a primarily as an analyst uh, for games like whether it's the Mountain West Conference like UNLV or San Diego State or Colorado State, Boise State, bouncing around uh, doing those games. Also the Big West Conference, you know from Long Beach State to Fullerton to you know Riverside, Santa Barbara. Then uh, this season, I worked a little bit. Purdue at Indiana on uh, national radio stuff. So you got to fly analyst. out there? Yeah. Yeah. So they fly okay. you out there. They put you up. And then, uh, yeah. So it's, like, it's a little bit of a hodgepodge. And I'll do a lot of NBA stuff, uh, uh, ad hoc stuff, like it, whether it's the Clippers pregame show or, you know, like just sports talk throughout the country on, you know, the NBA and what's going on and some of it on the Sacramento Kings. I spent a year with uh, what's now NBC, NBC Sports Bay Area on the Kings pre and post game show so it's kind of like a hodgepodge of uh of stuff so it's fun it's not unlike being on the corner at uh at hashways talking sports right i mean just breaking it down breaking down the knicks or the nets or the mets or the yankees so it's a great job and it's kind of fun too because you know uh, what what it's listen it's about learning about the game the people that you meet along the way there's always so much to learn so much fun and also in this job you can't you know like uh, coaching is tough because you know you got a million responsibilities and it's high turnover and people some are going to like you some are going to be unhappy because you're not getting playing time or whatever it may be you got to deal with the media there's a lot of demands alumni if you're a college coach recruiting alumni administration student body community you know there's a lot a lot to carry so as an analyst it's like it's it's tremendous you're a guest at shoot around the day of the game uh, you're a guest in that arena, wherever the game is. You're a guest on that network, that platform, and and you're a guest in somebody's living room. So it's like a lot of fun, uh, but you don't win and lose at the end of the day. But you don't have uh, you you also don't have people mad at you either. So it's kind of like a great job. It's a lot of it's a lot of fun just being around the game and learning, and it's fascinating what's going on and how it's changed and how it's evolved and. All that stuff. So that kind of keeps me going and really energized and passionate about it because you can, you know, look at UB Brown. He's going strong at 83. There's no stopping him. And you're you're learning along the way as the thing evolves. It's great. Like I told Lee, once life got real, I, I don't watch that much sports anymore. Once life started getting real, I lost it. I will watch five minutes of shit. And I yeah. Do you watch the end of games, Coco? Like, will you watch the finals and like and watch, watch the last couple fi- of minutes? I watched the finals Monday night. They were. What you by, think? They were down. But I didn't think anything at all. Yeah. It doesn't didn't didn't stir you at all. Didn't you know? 
Do you get emotional when you see teams win? Like, do you ever get emotional when you see, like, you know, uh, Durant and his mom or, or Curry and his family or... I don't give a yeah. Frenchman's fuck. Yeah. Yeah. They, uh, they seem like a Yankee team to me. The Warriors? Yeah. Golden State seems like a Yankee team to me. But they were terrible just a few years ago. Like, when I was following basketball, when the yeah. Celtics were pretty good, the Warriors were, like, the laughing stock. Yeah, they were booing Lakers oh, off, been, the, off the floor. They've been sucking yeah. for 20 years, so yeah. I'm really proud about that. I just don't know. I just... Yeah. Uh, no, it's fair enough. I mean, it's... I don't have anything. I don't have any... What's that expression? I don't have a dog in the fight. You don't have a dog in the fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like uh, college moves too fast. I mean, I, I know who Kylie Irving is. Yeah. He's a bad motherfucker. And I know who the kid from Golden State is. I know yeah. some of the players. I know the kid from North Bergen. That's oh, not, Kyle Anderson. Yeah, with the, the Spurs. San Antonio yeah, Spurs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, sure. Uh, you know, shit like that. But I couldn't tell you anything about yeah. anything. Yeah, yeah. Football, I watched the last couple playoff games. The right. white... Supremacy man is the best quarterback the last twenty years. It don't matter. Ain't nobody better than Tom Brady. Yeah, he's white year. supremacy man. Yeah, you know he's he's the he's he's the only white person that's really entitled that deserves to be entitled. The rest of white America can suck my dick <laughs> when they do what he could do: dump a pregnant chick and fucking win five Super Bowls. Then come save me, all right? <laughs> Just dumping the pregnant chick alone tells me you give a fuck about Catholicism and your last name is Brady. Now you're gonna win five Super Bowls to boot or whatever. He's won nineteen five, Super yeah. Bowls. Who gives a fuck? They ain't nobody better. Five than for him. seven. Yeah, Montana's thinking of making a comeback. This together, <laughs> he's fucking tormenting people. And if they fuck with him again, he might win this year too. It's unbelievable what they. He do. might win this yeah. year too if they fuck with him again. He might just go. You know what? I'll drop the first four games <laughs> because the quarterbacks they have under him are savages. Yeah, Garoppolo, they yeah. think, is pretty good. Yeah, yeah just yeah. to be under yeah. him and to watch What did they do with Garoppolo last year? They, they survived, right? Were they 3-1 and one with him? Well, he, uh, Before he Brady got, came back, He right? got hurt, I think, after the second game, so they brought uh, Jacoby Brissett oh, that's in. that's right. That's and then he right. won. And then, yeah, right. and then he won. won. Yeah. And then he won. won. Yeah. The fourth game. They got heat. Yeah. They got heat. If you're sitting yeah. behind Brady, you're learning. Well, that's in Belichick is unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, that you're system, learning, yeah. You're learning. So much behind me. It's like sitting behind Iverson. It's like sitting behind Julius Irving for four years. Yeah. It's like just sitting there and being his body double, guarding him, learning all those moves. You See, the thing is, you know what? It, it, listen, if you think about basketball, right? I could sum it up. It's ball, you man. Hit. F- sh- that's how you defend. Ball, you man. Shot goes up. Hit, find, go get it. Right? Offensively, it's pace and space. It's pick and roll. Pass and screen away. I mean, it, 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 in other words, what I'm trying to say is it's not complicated at all. It really isn't. No, no. And, and and all of this, like, ob- even though there's, like, all the analytics now and what have you, th- this obfuscation, you know, taking the simple and making it complex, and then you've got this, you know, blogger demagoguery where, you know, the pendulum swings on, you know, virtually a- every possession. People are going bananas every, you know, every game's life or death. They don't realize that, you know, like, it's so funny. You see, how about these reporters, like the questions they ask? It's like ridiculous. They, they ask uh, LeBron, he's now two zip. They're going back to Cle- going back to Cleveland. He's like, hey, do you think that you have to protect home court? It's like, of course you got to protect home. Are you a smart guy? What happens if we don't protect home court? Then somebody asked Doc Rivers, uh, Chris Paul scored, and then Utah came down and scored to beat them, you know? And they're down one, and somebody asked, did, 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 uh, did uh, Paul, Chris Paul score too soon? I mean, I could go on and on with these, these crazy questions. But anyway, my point is, it, you know, it, it's just interesting to watch because the game itself is not complicated at all, but it's about, uh, you know, getting these guys – Ultra talented, basically independent contractors, getting them to buy in and to incorporate your game plan into what you want. You see somebody like the Warriors do it, and the Spurs have been doing it quietly, almost like in a boring way to do it. You know, the Spurs have kept opponents under a hundred points for like twenty years, and we have never we have the last NBA champion that was. Out of the top ten in defensive rating was like the 0-1 Lakers. Billy, you know like, you're talking anyway. to me Chinese. Right now. <laughs> no, 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 right. I don't know I'll what stop. The I'll fuck stop. You're saying I don't give a fuck about the Chinese. At least you're taking notes. 100 points <laughs> anyway, a game. Anyway, but it's just interesting to watch. But to your point, though, it's true. It's hard to keep up with it because the free agency guys, like baseball, no, hard. They're no, all over the map. Just, They're all over the place. I couldn't. Once I followed sports as far as I could until life kicked in. Once my life kicked in. 
I couldn't sit there no more, Billy. Right, yeah. yeah I can't sit yeah, no more. Yeah. I got something to do. In the right. back of my mind, I'm there 10 minutes, and I go, okay, there's got to be something. Yeah. I could be yeah. doing to better myself. Yeah. So that yeah. was what happened. I couldn't, uh, I, I, I still remember. You matured. It's, you know, like, no, because I remember still, and it was even before I got locked up. Like I had given up sports. Like the, yeah. I was living in Denver, and everybody was John Elway crazy. Right. Oh and yeah. While yeah, people sure. yeah. were Elwaying, I was working. Right. I didn't you know what the fuck you they were, were talking yeah. about. And they yeah. would go, "What? Don't you? Aren't you interested?" And I go, "I'm an adult." Right. There's something right. that has to come first. If I have the the luxury, you know, I was taking classes, and I would go, "Wait a second, I'm going to watch four hours of football." I got to study for it. See, I'm giving up the game, Lee. I'm going home. This is it. The no, season's no, over. No, 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 no. No, I'm no I know. I'm just This is around. what happened to me. This is yeah, what happened to yeah, me. This is what yeah. personally happened to me. You know, and then I got, I went, I got locked up, and that became even higher. Like, right. I was like, what the fuck am I doing watching basketball? Right. Well, there's got to be something I could be fucking doing, you know? Yeah. Something. So now, I'll, I'll tell Lee, I watch sports for 15 minutes here. Eight minutes here. I watch a Dodger game. They got awful to watch. I can't watch it. Baseball slow. It's just yeah, too slow, slow for me yeah, anymore. Slow, yeah. I like September, so I'll wait till September. Football. You know, if yeah, uh, yeah. if I'm home on a Sunday night and the Red Sox are playing the Yankees, I'll watch an inning of both of them. I right. let them both go up. Yeah. That's yeah. enough for me. But to sit there for four innings, five innings, I could write a joke, guy. Yeah. I got yeah, lights yeah, to turn yeah. on. I got, there's always something. Yeah. You could do a push up. That's you right. That's right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's the yeah. other thing. It's eight fucking hours, and you yeah. put potato chips in your fucking mouth and pizzas and fucking wings, you know. <laughs> and it's Sunday, yeah. so yeah. you're gonna wake up Monday feeling like that. And this is the way. Like, even yeah. though I'm a fat fuck, like I always felt like this. Like I'm like, I'm gonna go over and go for what? To have potato chips and that onion dip, right? The Lipton right. and sour cream dip. It was just. I don't know what yeah. it was. See, now I got away from it when my kids were young. Right, you I got away to. from it. You had to, yeah, because I mean, you could you could watch it. The thing that saves yeah. you today is that you could tape things. Yeah, Again. exactly. Yeah. Fuck you. <laughs> I'm going to be one of those assholes. Please don't tell me. Did you watch no, the game? Uh, don't tell me. Please. No, no, no. no. Don't it's impossible me. now. I yeah, hate yeah, all that yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. I hate all that shit. I used to try to do that with the Patriots, but I can't. I had to stop because you, you'd always call me and tell me how Tom Brady yeah, was doing. Well, you know, I'm going to tape it and watch it later tonight. Well, then when somebody tells you, you're like, I wasted a tape. Right. <laughs> I wasted a tape. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to watch it now. Unless right. somebody goes, it was a spectacular game. Right. Right. Like with the Super Bowl this year. They were losing 29,000 points. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I went in the room yeah. and wrote for a little while. I right. came, but that's what I'll do. Yeah. Like, if it's something I want to watch, I sacrifice a little. There you go. Yeah. You got to give a little. But I used yeah. to get on Lee. You, Lee, you're 20 something years old. I'm 20 something years old. I'm getting my dick sucked. I'm not going to sit there with eight idiots at a bar. <laughs> Uh, the, well, hold, he held them under the points. If you're, you're getting paid for it, you know what I'm saying? Right. If you're yeah, not getting yeah, paid yeah. to study all those stats, yeah. but you're a dumb fuck during the week, I don't want to yeah. sit with the other Sunday. It's all fucking day. I can't, right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Billy, Billy, I grew up at the garden. Sure, Billy, yeah. I mean, the, Billy, I went to three Julia serving Christmas games at the garden. Once with Chuck McBreen when Julius on, on Christmas yeah. Day. I'm one of those assholes, okay? <laughs> I, I took a bus to see Moses Malone with the Houston Rockets when the Nets play that Piscataway. This is right. a surprise. It's a rack. Okay, yeah, there's, yeah. A, there's a surprise about that. You had to take a bus to the Port Authority and switch buses. Yeah. So we didn't get home till 2 in the morning. Wow. Me, Chuck McBreen, to see Moses Malone at Houston when he was 20, 20, and 20 every night. Yeah. 20 yeah. rebounds, 20 points, and 20 smacks to the face. <laughs> Somebody got beat up. I did shit. I went to, I went to, I drove to Philadelphia to see the Sixers. I drove to Uniondale to see the Nets as a kid. Right. I did everything. Sure, yeah, yeah. I went to see, I was there when Pete Rose beat up Bud Harrelson. I went to you maybe, were at that game? Well, yeah, 1973. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went to maybe 10 fucking Ranger games. I went to yeah. maybe two Islander games. You know, I went to just one Jet game. I never liked the Jets to sit yeah. out there. But I went to I don't know how many countless Giant games. How many fucking general games did I go to? How many right. general games did I fucking go to? You know what I'm saying? In 90 degree weather, you know what I'm saying? So for me to admit this to you as a sports guy, I mean, 
I don't know sure, what Sure, but happened. life changes, though. Life, I totally get it. It was the totally weirdest thing. And I, I gambled for a while. And once I left North Bergen, I said, you know what? I'll never gamble again. And, and now I totally gamble on this. He won't because he's got a fucking, you know. Yeah. So he won't bet. And then he'll come to me and say, how did you know? Come on. That's what we grew up in. We, right, now right. I see all the moves. And then right. once you see a team, you know how they're tailored. You start looking at their line. <laughs> and you see how they start fucking killing people. Whenever Brady has a high line, that means he's going to shut the lights out on you. That means your world's going to come through. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're done. But I just... Uh, yeah, I, I just do it because, you know, obviously my job. No, but, no, but it's your job. Yeah, yeah. And, it's and, your fucking and, job. And, it, and, it, and it, it's... For me, it just it's become fun again. Like for a while, I was like, "You're right." I kept, no, yeah, I kept yeah, one yeah, eye yeah, on no, it, no, no, running yeah. around with the kids. But uh, but I could totally see that though, because there's a lot. There's a lot. There there are so many demands on your time, and it disappoints hard. me. Is that right? As an American, yeah. sure, it disappoints me. But it disappoints me in the same way I'm disappointed by that. Okay, I'm not looking for a handout, Billy. But there's not a situation where I could come over here and go, Billy, what are you doing tonight? Nothing. Let's get the fuck out of here. Let's go see a fucking lake again. And we go down there, me and you go over to the place, and we throw a steak yeah. down our throat, and we grab Lee, and we smoke a number with Lee, and then we walk over. You know what? You want to charge me 65 for tickets to the Lakers? I'm all in. But I can't give you 185 for the top shelf. Right, right, right. Up, right I got to yeah. sit up there with angels. I got to sit up there all the way up at the top for 185. I can't do it. Yeah. I can't yeah. do it. Yeah, sure. No, I get that. I saw that. Julia yeah. serving for fifteen. Right. For yeah. Twelve fifty. I saw Julia serving on Christmas Day. You want to bother me <laughs> with one hundred and eighty-five to see these pathetic schmucks run up and down? <laughs> it breaks my heart that I don't go to fifteen Dodger games a year. I grew up at Shea Stadium. I'm Cuban. Right. Yeah. Sure. But you know what? I don't like what they're doing to the American public. A family of four has to pay fifty dollars yeah, to park. Yeah. Or if they want to save the fifth, they got to take a train like, yeah, like yeah. fucking uh, Yugoslavians on the fourth. Go suck my dick. That's why I'm a little. Yeah, you know, yeah they, no, they, that's they, a good point. I think that's the money point. situation of sports killed me. That I just got when I first moved here. I go to Costco, and I get two tickets for the Dodgers, two hot dogs, two sodas, and two pretzels, and parking for fifty dollars at Costco. Yeah. And you go there, and it's like a halfway empty game, and they'll upgrade you. And me and you go, we sit right. and listen. I, can, I got four good innings in me. Right, right. I got four yeah. innings before I look at you and go, we got to get the fuck out of here. Mets are in town next week, by the way. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> you, go, you go there, sit with those fucking knuckleheads, those fucking let's go Mets at Dodger Stadium. <laughs> then you walk around with a concussion helmet the rest of your life with a ball because you want to sit with a bunch of New Yorkers. Get the fuck out of here. I'll watch it for three innings and I'm fucking happy. <laughs> That's the other thing that like people just became. I don't want to go to a fucking game and get beat up. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. I don't want to wear a yeah. Met hat and get beat up or a Dodger hat. Right. This guy goes with a Mexican chick. They're gonna kill him one day, you know. <laughs> you know, fucking some peck of woods hanging out with a Mexicana. <laughs> you don't need that in your life. Either you go or she goes. You can't go together to Dodger games. You're gonna get killed. Yeah, maybe. I mean, they did. I, I think I don't think they care about it if if your team is not a rival. It's a joke. Lee. Oh, I know. It's a fucking joke, cocksucker. Billy Horrenda, I'm happy you came on here tonight. My pleasure. Thank You're you. You're a gentleman and a scholar. After forty <laughs> fucking years, it's still a pleasure knowing you. Just to right, let you I motherfuckers you. know, eighth grade, I was thirteen. I'm fifty four, so I gotta be knowing him forty one years when he first Crazy. went up there. He was a little kid looking at me. You're going to camp with my brother? <laughs> Fuck yeah, cocksucker. <laughs> First off, I want to tell you something. Whether I'm at jujitsu, whether I'm at the gym, if I'm wearing a nice pair of pants, me undies is always on. When I wear jeans, I can't wear me undies. The jeans fit a certain way and they fuck me up. But if I got a nice pair of dress pants on, a suit, jujitsu shorts, jujitsu gi, it's tremendous. There's no better underwear than me undies. You understand me? There's a reason I've been telling you about me undies for a few years now. They're simply the softest, most comfortable underwear you'll ever wear. Once you try them, you won't want to wear anything else, okay? Trust me. Unless you're naked or something like that in your swimsuit. Every pair of me undies is sustainably sourced and made from micro motor. A fabric that's three times softer than cotton. I told you guys this. If you're used to buying packs of uncomfortable, boring underwear that only come in white, gray, black, and maybe a tan, 
that, 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 that MeUndies will change everything, okay? Because MeUndies comes in all kinds of colors, patterns, and they release a new limited edition pattern each month that always sells out. This month, it's the rainbow confetti called Celebrate. Try MeUndies today. Go get the Celebrate pattern before they're all gone at MeUndies.com slash Joey. And I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to save you $20 on your, off your first pair. You have to feel yourself. You have to feel them for yourself to see why MeUndies has sold over 5 million pairs to date. And if you don't love your first pair of MeUndies, they're free. They're on the house. So do me a favor. Get 20% off your first pair plus free shipping at MeUndies.com slash Joey right now. I'm telling you, these are the most sumpt- these are the softest, most comfortable underwear you'll ever wear. If you wear them, I'll tell you what happens. It'll keep the sweat down. You're not even going to believe the things MeUndies done. It keeps your nutsack nice and clean, nice and warm, and they smell beautiful. That's why this month they got the confetti. They got the whole rainbow confetti print called Celebrate. Do me a favor. Go get the Celebrate pattern before they're all gone right now at MeUndies.com slash Joey, and you'll save 20% off your first pair. You understand me? Right now, MeUndies.com slash Joey. One more time, MeUndies.com slash Joey. Speaking of underwear, before you put your underwear on, you want to be clean and refreshed. That's where Hello Tushy comes in. What's Hello Tushy, Joey? Hello Tushy is a portable bidet that fits on your toilet to make your muffler smell and feel tremendous. You understand me? The summer's coming. You're walking around all day long. You get that humidity in your ass. You get that swamp ass. Next thing you know, you get hemorrhoids. Next thing you know, you get brown stains on your underwear. You're an adult. You don't need that shit. End it right now. Go to hellotushy.com right now and press in. It's hellotushy.com slash church. All right. And press in what? HelloTushy.com slash church. You don't got to press in dick, Joey. You know why? Because Hello Tushy is the way to go. I don't know if you know what a bidet is, if you know what a bidet works. It's like having a midget in the toilet. And it just spits at you, little asshole. You understand me? You know what that's like just sitting there and getting a little water up your little monkey or your little <laughs> asshole? And if you're a guy, you could sit back a little bit. You pull the skin back and you could just wash off that helmet. Sometimes you get like dews and little pieces of cotton in there and stuff like that. No more. No more. And ladies, you don't have to have that little sweaty monkey if you don't need to. Listen, as men, we like when your monkey's a little sweaty. But if you don't like it, if you don't like that little (laughs) onion, fuck it. Hello Tushy comes in, and they'll clean that monkey, that muffler, or that helmet spotless clean. And if you shift to the right or left, you get the creases in between your nutsack. And that helps out, too, because that's where the mold develops. <laughs> and that's where the real problems come in. So do yourself a favor. Look yourself in the mirror and say, from now on, I'm going to have a clean asshole. Why? Because HelloTushy.com is going to get it there. And you know what? It doesn't stop now. Father's Day's coming. You got those Sunday. You could order it and probably get it speed delivered to your dad by Sunday. By Sunday night, your, ass, your dad's asshole will be tip-top magoo, shiny like it was. <laughs> when he first came out of your grandmother's monkey. So do me a favor. Get on HelloTushy.com right now and press in. HelloTushy.com slash church. Boom! And get 10% off delivered right to your house. All right? Hello Tushy is a tremendous product. And if you don't, if it breaks something, you got a 90-day ba- money-back guarantee, which you'll never want. Once you get a uh, HelloTushy.com a day, I guarantee you'll get them for every goddamn bathroom in the house. Keep your asshole clean. It's a whole new year. It's a whole new set of priorities. Go to HelloTushy.com right now. Beside that, I love you motherfuckers. Thank you. I want to thank Billy. I want to thank my man, Lee Syed. Don't forget, tomorrow night, the Ice House. Well, tonight, when you get this, it's Thursday night, the Ice House. And next Friday and Saturday, Governors up in Levittown, cocksuckers. Stay black. Uncle Joey loves you. See you next week.